the smoke radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing? Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. How you doing? Today is Monday, September 5th. 249 days into the new year, just 117 days left. Happy Labor Day, everybody. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California, and I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is... Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the Planet. I'm your also humble host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend so far. It's not over yet. Everybody's off today. I hope you are. Hope you had a great time. Yesterday was our Labor Day. We had some uh, family and friends over, made some burgers, drank some vodka, some beer. We had Rita's style of French fries, corn on the cob. All right, enough of that. We had a great time yesterday. Ah, yeah. What do we have for dessert? Oh, cheesecake. (laughs) Yeah, we went in large. Good time. Painted the house this weekend, too, as well. Well, I didn't. We had a crew come in and uh, paint the house. And what was really funny about that is um, 10 guys showed up. And I got to tell you, <laughs> they they did the house in like six hours. And, and it's perfect. <laughs> I, got, I still can't believe it. It would have taken me like two months to do what they did in just uh, a, what it just seemed like a few short hours they were done. And I want to thank uh, Mario and his crew. Amazing job. Thank you so much. We went from uh, a bland uh, beige to a very cool, trendy sage. Rita calls it sage. The paint store called it antique jade (laughs) so it's green the bottom line is the house is green all right let's go let's get this show cracking tonight we have back with this very special guest and good friend maureen saint germain is here her new book is called realities of creation moving beyond the limitations of our belief she's one of the contributors to this tome and we will be talking about that tonight tomorrow night another big night here fade to black Margot Mateus is going to be here, and she's going to be live in the bunker, I think. Right, Rita? Right? Margot's going to be here live in the bunker. I can't believe it. She's actually going to be with us live in the studio. Wednesday night, Caroline Corey is going to be here. Yeah, yeah, Caroline's going to be here. First time guest. Kind of hard to believe, but uh, she'll be here on Wednesday. Thursday night is another Fader night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake News room. And the call-in number, of course, is 323-825-5045. And we will get to some phone calls tonight with Maureen. Follow us on Twitter at J Church Radio. That's what you want to do. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. 
Everything is fade to black and Jimmy Church Radio and stuff like that. It's easy to do. Follow, like, and subscribe. You can also email throughout the show tonight. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Come and hang out with us in Twitter. Twitter is different for us than what Twitter intended it for. We have turned, look at all these. <laughs> I miss these. I'm sitting here yapping. All right, we got the uh, the dancing gifts are flowing in Twitter. What we do with Twitter is is it's our sandbox. So come and hang out with us over there. Uh, all of the fader knots are there. Use the hashtag F2B. That's all you got to do. Get yourself tweet deck. Install tweet deck. Get your column going. Hashtag F2B. And then you'll see what Twitter can really be. All right? And that's all you got to do. If you don't have a Twitter account, if you're listening down and you're like, Jimmy, man, ah, do I have to get a Twitter account to be a fade or not? No, you don't. But if you want to be a real fade or not and you haven't gotten a, a Twitter account, go and do it. It's so funny. I get uh, tweets every single day uh, from people going, you know what? I started a Twitter account just because of you. And, <laughs> and it's cool. So you should do it and come and hang out with all of us because we do. We run it in real time throughout the show. I get to hang out and get into the conversations that everybody is ha having with the guest and about the guest. And most of the guests that we have on the show are in Twitter in the sandbox during the show. So you can ask them questions and and stuff uh, right there instead of calling in, okay? So that's what we do here. It's all interactive. We have the Spreaker chat room. We have the uh, the KGRA chat room. And I'm hanging out in all of them during the show, okay? All right. With that, let's get this show cracking. We got a couple of, uh, I think we'll be ready to go by next week. And we've got a pretty cool announcement that we're going to be doing and I think we can time it all out and be ready by next Monday. So hang out for that next Monday. And I think uh, I think you're going to be uh, ecstatic. Ecstatic. That's my Mike Tyson impersonation. Don't forget that David Icke is going to be here in the United States of America this week. And he will be in New York this Saturday. Now, you can go and see him live this month here in the United States. Go and get your tickets right now. Go over to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Click on the Worldwide Wake Up Tour banner right there. It'll take you over to David's website. All of the tickets and information that you need for New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco are all there. We will be with David on the 17th, which is a Saturday here in Los Angeles. So come and hang out with all of us. I would love to meet all of you. Uh, it is uh, at, uh, it's in Irvine. And uh, so come on down. It's at the Marriott in Irvine and uh, hang out with all of us. It is an all day event. All right, there you go. Just go and click right now over at jimmychurchradio.com. And uh, also, through tomorrow, you can still get Tom DeLong's book, Secret Machines, book one, Chasing Shadows, and use the promo code fade to black That's with no spaces, fade to black and you're going to get 15% off. There's a banner for that set up. There's two of them, actually, over at Jimmy Church Radio. Click on it. takes you over to tothestars.media. That's Tom's website. And the special offer is good through tomorrow and while you're over at our website you might as well go to cccp publishing click on their banner right now at uh, jimmychurchradio.com and purchase future esoteric by author brad olson for the special fader not price of twelve dollars and 97 cents and cccp publishing will throw in an extra book in the box just for you because you are a fader not just use the promo code Jimmy, J-I-M-M-Y. Very simple. And, of course, Life Change T. I just spoke with uh, Ronnie today, and he's got new commercials coming over later on this week. We're running his old commercials, but we run what he sends us, right? Okay, he promised us new commercials this week. Life Change T. Get the T.com. 
All you have to do is use the promo code Jimmy, either over the phone or online. You're going to get free shipping on your order. It's how you support the show. You support yourself, support our sponsors, get it all done. Studio Dome. I get email every single day from somebody that is either purchased the Studio Dome Fader Not Special or Life Change Tea um, every single day. And I love it when it happens. Everybody just loves the Studio Dome speaker system. And you can get yours now, right now. It has the TWS True Wireless Bluetooth Stereo Technology. All right. It includes two SB B2 speakers and power cables for just $129 in a hard shell case. Use the promo code JCRTWS when you order. 60% off the normal price of $399. You get it for $129 in the case, and you get free shipping. Let's get this show cracking. Happy birthday to Michael Keaton Beetlejuice. 65 years old. What was that movie um, that just came out where he was flying? What was that movie called? Oh, man. Birdman? Was that it? Man, that was a good movie. Michael Keaton. I always think of Beetlejuice, but uh, there you go. 65 years old. Rose McGowan today is 43. She was really good in that movie. Oh, what was it? Death Proof? Was it Death Proof? Or the one with Danny Trejo when they're like on Mars. Ah, I can't remember. Both uh, Quentin Tarantino and uh, Robert uh, uh, Rodriguez movies. Very good. Rose McGowan today. Wasn't she married to like, she was married to Marilyn Manson, wasn't she? I can't remember. Our dead guy's birthday today. All right, everybody. I need a moment of silence. Because our dead guy's birthday today is... Freddie Mercury, 1946 to 1991, died at the age of 45. Don't need to get into those details because he was one of the best and he deserves all of our respect right now. Happy birthday, Freddie Mercury. And I started, you know, I was looking at some of the songs that he wrote, right? Bohemian Rhapsody, Killer Queen, Somebody to Love, Crazy Little Thing Called Love. We are the champions. We are the cha Think about that, right? Man, Freddie Mercury. Do you have, I'm going to light up Twitter right now. What's your favorite Queen song? And nobody say Bohemian Rhapsody because that's, uh, that's cheating. Bicycle? Fat Bottom Girls? Huh? <laughs> One of the great Queen songs for me, Freddie Mercury didn't even sing. I am in love with my car. <laughs> that was Roger Taylor, but, uh, not my favorite queen song. One of my favorite queen songs. They were all great. Every album and Ryan, Hey, hey Ryan, you've got to get out of the house. What you should do is leave the house. You should just get up and walk down the street. Even if you just go a block away and turn around and come back, just leave the house, Ryan. All right. Okay. On this day in history. Yeah, we are the champions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Spread your wings. Nicely played. I like that. Um, hmm. You know, uh, for me, the album Bohemian Rhapsody is pretty epic. The game, though. Oof. That whole album. I mean, it's just, it's like every song, but uh, there you go. Love me some Queen. On this day in history, 1972, Arab terrorists take Israeli hostage at the Olympics. Yeah, they did. They jumped a fence surrounding the Olympic village in Munich, Germany, carrying bags filled with guns. And then, although guards spotted them, they didn't pay any attention because athletes were jumping the fence every day to return back to their living quarters. So they just let it go. And that, that's the truth. Fader fact, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. This is a fader fact. Write this down. 3 a.m. is when most Americans are sleeping. 
95.1% of all of America is sleeping at 3 a.m. And 6 p.m. is when most Americans are awake at 97.5%. Interesting, isn't it? I thought so. Today, very special guest back with us, Maureen St. Germain. Her new book is Realities of Creation. Tomorrow night, Margot Mateus, the one and only, is going to be here live in the bunker. Wednesday night, Caroline Corey is going to be here. And I can't believe she's going to be here just for the first time. But she's going to be here on Wednesday, Thursday night, another fader night, open lines all night long. John Rappaport's going to be here with his No More Fake Newsroom. The call-in number tonight, as in every night, is 323-825-5045. Well, the news hit today. It looks like we have a second Dyson Sphere. Yeah. And if you if you don't know anything about this, you can go over to our Facebook page right now. We've got a picture and, and, and a little, little information there. But it's called Star Epic, E-P-I-C, Epic, 204-278-916. And it shows strange flickering, but this time, 65% of the light is being blocked. Now, once you eliminate the impossible, my friends, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. There's probably a horde of things we haven't thought of eliminating yet, but it seems we may now know that uh, two stars are being masked by alien megastructures. I don't know what's going on, but to have this happen twice now in the past year is kind of flipping me out. Tabby's star, the one I reported on already, KIC 846-2852, that one was found by an amateur group of astronomers, and they noticed it was doing something extremely odd, in my opinion. It was flickering. Its brightness was changing by up to 22%, a much greater degree than could be explained by any other known possible cause. Just don't know. And a separate look back at over a century of data has also appeared to show it having dimmed by about 20% in total. Something strange is going on out there. And now it appears we've found another one. And I, I, I don't get it. We have uh, Proxima Centauri, Proxima B. We've had uh, this strange 11K radio signal last week. Now that appears the excuse is now that it was a, a known military satellite broadcasting a weak signal. Eh, I, I'm not so sure about that. Even though they did say that that 11K was a military ban, I understand I reported on that last week. But we have a lot of alien extraterrestrial news over this last year. Now it turns out that the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics in Germany has been watching this star, EPIC 204-278-916, since 2014. Now, like KIC 846-2852, it falls within the field of view of NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. Now, what's interesting for me like KIC 846-2852, it has these astonishing dips in the amount of light that it's been throwing our way. And these flickers now are far, far more dramatic. The team of astronomers led by Simone Scaringi says that they have observed that over a period of 78 days, EPIC 204-278-916 light fluctuated erratically by up to 65% over 25 consecutive days. And I'm going to tell you right now, in the laws of astronomy, this simply does not make any sense. 
in the laws of fade to black and Jimmy Church, it makes even less sense. Blocking out that much starlight requires something enormous. Enor- ginormous. Anything smaller and closer would likely be immediately apparent, like a planet. You know, when something passes between us and other stars, we know what, what it is. This is something different. I don't know what it is. The questions are, what could it be? And I get that. If you, if you think about it, is it a huge planet? But well, that's not likely. A planet the size of Jupiter casts a shadow barely the equivalent of 1% of our sun's light. And when it does, it does so in a regular, predictable manner. The sun comes up, it goes down. Like clockwork. This is how we find all of those alien planets. And it's a very consistent thing. And the software is so sophisticated now. And Kepler knows that, I mean, it, it is scanning thousands and thousands of object a minute. It knows. Is it a cloud of comets? Like what they were saying with uh, KIC. And that was a possibility. And then they even struck that down. A- and again, such a chunky, clunky, massive star stuff would provide other indications of its presence. And we would know that. So far, it hasn't. And it would seem that it would need some 650,000 comets, each one of them 200 kilometers wide, to have that kind of effect. Is it a distorted star of some kind? (laughs) Some abnormal spinning craziness, right? That would have some kind of bump or bloat on their far side, their equator. That would create some kind of cooler area. And as it rotated, it would, you know, okay, that's a reach. I'm just trying to come up with solutions here. I I don't know. Some kind of black spot. I, I don't know. Is it an alien meg- megastructure? Is it a Dyson sphere? Well, the whole it must be aliens thing is always a dangerous, you know, zone to go into. And it's the easiest answer. But in this case, to me, it's at least the most logical. And if we found a second one, you know, what, what are we to think here? Freeman Dyson, when he published his paper back in the 1960s, speculating that long-term survival of advanced civilizations would make it necessary for them to harness all the energy of their suns. I get that. Michio Kaku talks about this. You know, and so when we think about that, and it is, it is the next logical step for anybody, including us. That's why I'm fascinated with this, because if we could do it right now, we would do it. The amount of energy that that we're talking about here that we would need to go and do the things that we want to do and that we dream about, it's got to come from somewhere. Solar power, right? Tap into it. Not solar power, solar panels. Well, maybe that, too. But to be able to tap into the sun so we can go and do the things that we want, that's that's the next step. Now, the other thing that I was thinking, could it be a huge dust cloud? You know, some remnant of something. Not only a dust cloud, but some gaseous mass. Something that is just floating around out there in the universe and it's, it's just in the way. Is it possible? Ah, yeah. But I I would assume that they're doing um, some kind of infrared processing of this and they're looking and they're trying to do gas analysis and, and, and they would do that and then give us the answer, oh, it's this, it's this. It's just dust. It's from another explosion. It's from something else. You know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. What I do know is for these kinds of reports to come out when we have, uh, how do I say this correctly? We have accumulated the technology to look 
at these planets, at these uh, other solar systems. And, and that's what we're doing actively. We are scanning every single day. We're looking for the hopes of something. And it's getting better and better and more sophisticated. And so as this stuff continues and we start to find more, I think we need to start leaning on other intelligence being out there instead of jumping to some other conclusion. I think the easiest one is the mo the simplest one is the way to go. What could be blocking out 65% of a star? It's fascinating. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Couple of things really quick uh, before I move on to Maureen. I've got about a minute left here. Uh, an interesting announcement came out today um, in the mainstream media, and it was that the White House has canceled President Obama's upcoming meeting with Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte, who's out of his bleeping mind, sort of. He lashed out at Obama uh, today for wading into the issue of the Philippine leader's controversial policy towards drug dealers, right? Shoot to kill. <laughs> which was his campaign platform. And he, he pretty much told everybody, if you know a drug dealer, you know somebody that's financing drug dealers, take them out. <laughs> Citizens, whatever, shoot to kill, put them in the ground, or, or that they should just surrender before they are killed. Right? That, that was his platform. And he's not joking around about it. And for him to go off on Obama today, right? Uh, White House officials had said that Obama would confront the Philippine president about his country's handling of drug dealers, including the what they're calling extrajudicial killings or government executions without the benefit of a trial. Just take you out. You look like a drug dealer, right? That's what's going on. And I guess, I guess the only way to look at it is, man, it's their country. He was elected. And if that's the way he wants to go about it, that's their business. But for him to thumb his nose back at the United States, when we've been propping them up and feeding them money and arms and, and, and just everything that we have done for them, including World War II, I think it is a little bit backwards. And with what's going on with China right now in the Philippines and what's going on in the South China Sea, I think you just need to behave a little bit. It's okay to make fun, right, and, and get everybody riled up, but you still need us. <laughs> That's just the way that it is. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Maureen St. Germain. We've got a great week of Fade to Black ahead. I can't wait. Margot Mateus is with us tomorrow. Caroline Corey is here on Wednesday, Thursday night. Another open lines fader night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter right now at J Church Radio. I'll be right back with Maureen St. Germain. Stay right there. Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. Doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. 
And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three letter. So, seriously, give them a call today at 1 877 909 5444. Again, 1 877 909 5444. Or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N A T T A X E X P E R T S. Dot com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. Hi, folks. Ronnie here reminding you that June is Health Awareness Month, sponsored by GetTheTea.com. Many of you have heard our tea commercial, maybe visited the website, but haven't committed because, well, you just don't know. Skeptical. We understand. Just to remind you, our tea is not just tea. In fact, very little tea. Life Change Tea is a unique blend of eight different herbs, removing intruders that attack your health. You brew our tea to make the concentrate, you add water, and put in the fridge. Two 8-ounce glasses a day, and life will be good. Visit us at GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. And this month is lots of fun stuff with Health Awareness Month. You could be picked and receive your order absolutely free. You never know. Read the testimonies and try our products. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. And for great health tips, Visit my YouTube channel at Health Matters Now, where you can learn about health tips and how products work on your body. Join me, GetTheTea.com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Kletsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This Mass is Kyle and you're listening, listening to Jimmy Church Radio. <laughs> All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. You can follow me on Twitter right now at J Church Radio. Use the hashtag F2B. Come and hang out with the sandbox. I think uh, Maureen's probably uh, there right now. Our guest tonight is Maureen St. Germain, and she assists people in meeting and surpassing their life dreams and goals using the laws of quantum physics and sacred geometry. Maureen's lifelong interest in the Akashic Records uh, resulted in her being granted access to this dimension that has been off limits to most of humanity for millions of years. Founder of Akashic Records International, she's an extremely accurate Akashic Records guide and instructor. Widely known for her Amazon.com bestseller, Beyond the Flower of Life, she has been sharing knowledge that she has gained from her years of teaching, meditation, and research on the ancient truths. Label a modern-day mystic in famous Wisconsin mystics, Maureen has taught in 15 countries throughout Europe, Canada, the United States, Egypt, China, and Japan. Her books have been translated into Russian, Italian, and Chinese. Her current release is Realities of Creation, Moving Beyond the Limitations of Our Beliefs, with Jean Adrienne, Leslie Amerson, Julia Griffin, Lori Huston, Kathleen O'Keefe Cavanos, Linda Minnick, Suzanne Strissauer, Lynn Waldrop, and it is available right now on Amazon. Her website, of course, is Maureen St. Germain. I would like to welcome back Maureen St. Germain. Hey, Jimmy. Good to be here. Oh, I lost my audio for one quick second. Okay, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> ah, panic. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. What a great holiday this was. Yeah. And how was yours? It was fantastic. I had the most amazing thing happen standing in line at the Broad Museum yesterday. Tell Absolutely me about off it. Off the charts. What happened? <clears throat> a woman came up to us. We were waiting in line. My husband had run off for coffee. And she said, anybody want free tickets for early admission? And I said, I'll take them. She said, yeah, but they're for two. And I said, my husband's coming back. I'll take them. And she says, well, you have to come back and talk to us because it's a family ticket and I have six people on this ticket. And I said, no problem. I went with her. I chatted with him for a minute. I went back to look for Vito. 
I came back. She handed me this piece of paper. I looked at the paper and it had the name Regelsberger on it. And I said to them, you know, I used to know a family in Ohio named Regelsberger. They were my dad's best friend. And the elderly woman standing there with them looked at me and said, are you Maureen? Shut up. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Pat Regelsberger, the lady who asked me if I was Maureen, right. knew, knew my parents. And we chatted and we, you know, we chatted it all up and we figured it out. The last time she saw me was my first wedding 45 years ago. How crazy is that? Isn't that just the best? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I hope you guys just hung out for the rest of the day, too. We did. We totally did. We totally did because there was so much to catch up on. And she stayed touch w in touch with my mom. So my mom and, and her are still really good friends. And, you know, they, they were up on each other's stuff, but they... Hadn't, she hadn't seen me. I hadn't seen her son or her grandson and any of that cool stuff. Wow. You know, that the world is a big place. I mean, it's small, <laughs> right? But it's well, big. You, you know, the Broad is in L.A. Vito and I got up like at 6 a.m. to get there by opening time. And they came from Orange County. And, you know, what are the odds of landing in the same place at the same time with somebody you know from way back when? And And you know what's weird? Anything that would have changed your journey yesterday, you know, maybe five minutes late getting out of the shower, can't find your purse, lost your keys, it, the meeting would have never happened. That's right. Plus, they had two friends that were supposed to come, and they bailed, and that was the whole, only reason we connected. Wow, that is that is true. Okay, did you get any family secrets out of her? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the whole point of it, right? You got to get right. some get that's some right. dirt on your dad, right? <laughs> okay, wow that 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 is really really cool, and really I love tricky. it. I, yeah, I love it when that stuff happens, and. Uh, I was, um, uh, you know, my stories don't matter, but it was probably 20 years ago and I was traveling uh, somewhere in the United States and, and on business and I was walking into this like convenience store to uh, whatever, you know, and I'm walking in, I want to say it was a 7-Eleven, but that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm walking in and this guy comes up to me, little guy, and he goes, hey man, uh, are you Jimmy Church? And I go, yeah. And this now, uh, mind you, this I'm, I want to say this was like in Salt Lake City or something. And he goes, man, I'm so and so uh, from Indianapolis, man. You used to teach me guitar. <gasps> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. But but what are the odds? Yeah, of that you know, happening. Yeah, it, that's it, quantum entanglement. That's woo. woo. I mean, it was just. <laughs> I mean, it was just bizarre. It was just, yeah. you know, and I didn't look the same. I've got short hair now, and I was probably in a suit. But it, it happened in front of the 7-Eleven. I ended up talking to him for a couple of minutes, and then we went our separate I don't even remember his name. Wow. But uh, it, it, it was just bizarre just to have that crossing of, uh, of, of, of people. It happens for a reason. It, well, it really I think does. we're going to see more and more of that, to be honest. Well, um, okay. Before we jump into that, <laughs> let, let let's back up. And you've you've had such a fascinating life. I mean, totally fascinating to the point where it has taken you down. You know this journey that you're on now. Um, I want to go back to your childhood. When did you first start to see signs of uh, these? these, um, I want to say gifts that you have now, when did you first know that you were a little bit different? Well, I was aware of energy. I was aware of beings watching me from the time I can think, probably age five or six, that I really have conscious awareness of it. And um, there were times when I asked, actually asked to be invisible so I wouldn't be seen because I knew I was being watched. And I wasn't sure whether that was the good guys or not. You know, you're a little kid, but you could feel, you know, there's energy out there. I could also feel my, my physical energy field. My physical energy field was so big as a child, I couldn't contain it. So, you know, anything that happened and I would cry. And at one time, my, um, my older brother uh, got in trouble. My mom yelled at him and said, you know, quit it, whatever you're doing. And he said, all I did was look at her. And she said, well, then don't look at her. <laughs> so I was really, really sensitive as a right, child. And, right. and that's, you know, that's the, the downside. Um, did your because, brother, did, was your brother sensitive? 
Well, I think everybody in my family is. My mother's quite psychic. Right. And um, I think the guys in the family are psychic, but they're like what I call the reluctant mystics. You know, they don't want to admit it, but they open up their mouth and stuff comes out of their mouth. You know, like when my younger sister passed away in a car accident, both of her siblings had dreams of being of driving into a tree, which is what happened to her. It was pretty bizarre, you know, th- th- that very morning. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, you know, we all have the gift, but I think I've really, you know, worked it. And I've been called to to use it to help people. Did your mom encourage you? I think so, because she was very open about it, very respectable about it. You know, when when she was a young woman and dating my dad, and he was in the military and he was an MIA, she was using a Ouija board and a good Catholic girl doesn't do that. <laughs> and um, the Ouija board told her that he was, you know, like 60 kilometers outside of whatever city. And when she got the, to the kilometers part, she just freaked out. And that was the last time she ever touched a Ouija board um, because she knew that there was definitely something behind it. You know, you wouldn't say kilometers if you were um an American. Yeah, in, in the United States. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So she's always been psychic. I remember when my grandma passed away, she told my dad that she had had a dream that grandma had passed away from a stroke. And, you know, my dad got up and grandma had already had the stroke. What does your mom uh, think now, uh, you know, today about uh, where you're at? And do you guys talk about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My mom is 91. All right. And um, I think she's pretty proud of me. You know, she... Uh, she jokes around that I come by it honestly. And um, yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't think she has a full awareness of what I'm doing, to be honest. Um, well, I think I asked you once before, or if I didn't, I meant to. Did, did your parents ever talk about ufology or alien existence? Did they ever see anything uh, when you were growing up? Not that I know of. Um, you know, we lived on a farm uh, in big acreage and that not that I know of. I mean, I, I was aware of them. Right. But I don't know that they were. And I'm not sure I understood how I knew. There were a lot of things that I knew without knowing how I knew. You know, like the classic funny story was when I was in kindergarten and this teacher calls me to the front and says, you know, um, what's your phone number? And I said, I don't know it. And then she said, well, what's your address? And I looked at her, g- glared at her and said, why are you wasting my time asking me these questions when you've got the answer on the piece of paper in front of you? And of course, uh, my approach was everybody knows me. Everybody's going to find me or pick me up. It's, I'm on a farm for heaven's sakes. I'm not going to wander off somewhere. There's no place to go. <laughs> you <know>? Did you, <laughs> did you, <laughs> at that age, you know, five, six, seven, being aware of, of things going on, what did you tell your mom about, you know, what you were seeing or communicating with? Uh, I never told them anything. Um, you know, it was kind of funny. I never really felt attracted to do that. I, I was aware of information and I would say things and my parents would look at each other and, you know, they'd know I knew, but they wouldn't say anything in the moment. But on the other hand, my mother was also very plugged in, you know, and, uh, you know, for years as a kid, I wanted to twirl a baton and she wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't hear of it. We were farm people. We didn't do that stuff. And finally, when I was a freshman in high school, I put my foot down and I said to myself all day long, I'm going to tell her, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use my allowance money. I'm just going to do it. And I get home and she said, you know, I've been thinking all day. If you still want to do that, you can. Oh. Yeah. Did so, you, was, yeah. Was, was, <laughs> was that you or her? <laughs> yeah, right. Who was it? Who knows? <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's kind of a fun thing because I that's what I did. I did it in high school. I made head majorette as a junior and uh, twirled in college. It was pretty funny. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I, how how powerful is the mind when it comes to that? I mean, do we even know? No, I don't think we do. And as a matter of fact, one of the biggest things a person can do to grow this is to let go of what of the way things are, just to kind of unhook from that and say, well, that's just one version of the reality. That's not the only one. And just kind of take that attitude. You know, just like you hear a story from one person, then you hear a story from another, and you go, well, that's just their version. That's just their version. And so if, if you have an experience, instead of expecting the experience, is that how is how things are, 
to look at the experience and say, well, that's just one version of reality. I'm sure there's another. And to keep doing that because what that does is trains you to find the other versions of the reality, to find, you know, the loophole or the synchronicity like I had yesterday that is magically in your world because you're ready for it, you're open to it, and you're saying, hit me, you know, I'm ready. Why is it that, um, and not that there's anything wrong with it, but when uh, when most people are looking at life's challenges, they look at their love life first, right? They, that, that's the, you know, but, but you can use the same aspect for just about anything and piece yourself together to, uh, uh, to make yourself happy on all levels. Right. Yeah, that's true. And you know, as far as the love life goes, I love to talk about people's love life because one of the fastest ways to manis- manifest your beloved is to start writing love letters to him or her. And you, you, you know, you get a nice journal and you start writing love letters and you start writing as if you've already met them. You're just not in the same city right now. And you, you know, I love it that we both love to go to museums. I'm, it's so wonderful that we love the same music. I love that you love the same food as me. I love, you know, all the good stuff. You can even use all the good stuff from any prior relationship and throw that into it. And every time you're lonely, because that's a really powerful time, your emotions are high, write a love letter and you know, keep the journal set aside. And whenever you're feeling down or blue or missing, you know, the opportunity to be with someone, you know, I want to go to the movies. I wish I had someone to go with, whatever it is to to just write a love letter. And that moment, I'm so happy that we met. I'm so happy we're together, blah, blah, blah. And it will manifest that beloved so fast. Now, I, I think that that works for women. Men don't keep journals. Right. Men don't write love letters. <laughs> How well, do you, you get know, that same? I, I hear what you say, but right? I, I had a client, a man who was in a very unhappy marriage and he followed a whole protocol that I gave him. And that was one of the things he was supposed to do. And within a very short time period, his, his wife asked for a divorce. He was a, apparently, you know, committed to staying in the relationship if he was supposed to. Um, but then she's asking for a divorce. So he let her go. And, and right away he met the woman of his dreams, and it, it came together. And so, you know, even if you're not a journal writer, you can buy a journal and write a love letter whenever you're down. You know, that's a two minute job. And it also shifts your energy because now you've used that emotion. You know, you've recycled, you've used the emotion in a positive way because emotion is powerful. Emotion moves mountains. Emotion is what happens when, when we have really deep spiritual experiences. It's often when we're at an emotional you know, crisis, somebody's died, something has happened, we've lost a job, something big is happening, or emotionally distraught, then something else happens to open up our inner window, so to speak, our inner knowing. And so the emotions are a very powerful tool to use, may as well put them to work. And, you know, just look at your, your sad emotions, your down emotions and recycle them. And, and, you know, it's, it's something very interesting. You know, um, one time when I was really down, really, really down, when my first marriage ended, and, You know, everything was collapsing around me. I remember saying to God, I want to get out of this, but I don't want to do anything. Don't make me do anything. And I was told, ask for God to show you how much you are loved. That's all. You know, dear God, show me how much I'm loved. That's it. That's all you do. And that's all I did. And my world changed. And within a very short period of time, I wasn't in that funky, awful place. And, you know, sometimes we are. We're in that place where we're so sad, so down, we don't even want to get out of it. We just want to, you know, make it go away. But don't make me do anything. <laughs> I, you know, I'm picturing the big, tough guys, you know, that are listening right now. And they're like, uh, well, you know, I don't I don't have a journal and I don't have emotions. You know, I'm, you know, I'm big and tough. Right. What do you say to uh, because <laughs> then you wonder why you have issues with your life, right? <laughs> well, I think your point is well taken. So if he's a big, tough guy and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to own that, then I'd say, OK, bring me a couple pract- practice beloveds so I can figure out what's wrong with me so that I'm ready when the real deal comes along. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly right. Oh, you know, um, I want to change gears just a little bit because we get we have to stay on this for the rest of the night. Oh, I just got a, a tweet in. Walter wants to know if you're going to be reading any Akashic records tonight uh, with callers. That's up to you. Okay. See, <laughs> I, I, I love it when you do that, too, as well. Um, 
is is with all of this stuff that uh, the media has been reporting on over the last I'm going to go back a year, but certainly the last month with with alien contact, finding Proxima B, you know, the closest star to us actually has a planet that's habitable. Um, uh, the these alien megastructures and uh, uh, it's it just seems like alien uh, presence has been talked about a lot lately. Is there something going on here that we need to know about? I think so. And the first thing I want to say is, you know, because I'm so plugged in, I can spot it when it's it's I'll use the word disinformation or when it's um, um, massaged information or deliberate. Right. And, I, you know, I came across a really yummy blog and they had gorgeous pictures. And I wrote the guy and I said, where are your pictures coming from? Oh, they're coming from NASA. And I'm thinking he doesn't have the right to use those. He's even he doesn't have a free, free, free trade to use those, you know, because he's not giving credit. He's just using them. And I realized he's one of them, you know, and he's part of a system of slowly leaking the information to people because I think we're getting ready for real contact. You know, there's tons of people that have had direct contact with aliens and have had direct contact with the space program and all of that. You know, you've had Corey Good on. Um, and I believe that there's a counter movement to release it slowly so that it doesn't freak people out. Um, and, and the number one thing, I will tell you as, as a channel, the number one thing that I could feel energetically about three or four years ago was this concern at higher levels that if humanity received the information that, you know, there were aliens and that they've been visiting our planet for, you know, 50 or 100 or eons, who knows, right. um, that that might put, throw people into a panic, you know, and then if the truth came out about all the other stuff that's been going on, that people would become, um, you know, they would riot or they'd become, uh, you know, going after people and lynch mobs and things like that. And there was a real concern. I could feel it energetically that there was a real concern that people would act out their anger inappropriately. And that has shifted. So energetically, that, that concern doesn't exist to the degree it did before. So what that tells me is that humanity itself is starting to accept these things at every level of consciousness. And they're also ready to get on with their lives, to move on. And that there's not going to be this sense of vindictiveness that used to exist because that energy is gone from the planet. That, you know, aside from the war matrix that exists that can be plugged into to bring in, you know, hateful acts. There's a lot of energy that's the antithesis of that, that is people being good to people, you know, good stuff happening and the shift of energy. So a lot of the stuff that we see in the news, is just, you know, it's like energy to take our mind off of where we're really at. But I think humanity is shifting in a very gracious way and people are looking after other people. How do you deal uh, with that, with the news? You know, it's nothing but fear porn now. It's 100 percent. It doesn't matter what if it's your local news or the national news or world news. It's all coming from the same point. Uh, and it's fear porn. How do you deal with it? Um, I actually um, usually look at it briefly and then dismiss it kind of like you might look at something that you know you're not interested in and you know it's there but you're not interested in it so you move on and that's kind of how i deal with it um i do pay attention if my inner red flag goes up and i need and i get told you need to look at this you need to be aware of this um you know i've had experiences where i could feel i'll go back to an event that's historical and that'll explain something I was in New York when that explosion occurred in Washington, D.C., that everyone said was an earthquake. And when it occurred, I physically felt it. I was standing on the ground in New York and I felt it. Now, it could be that because I'm so sensitive, I could feel it. I don't know. I've been in a number of earthquakes. And when they announced it was an earthquake, I remember saying to someone, that wasn't an earthquake. That was not an earthquake. I could tell the difference. And so I knew right away that whatever they were telling us, it wasn't true. And then 
I didn't know what it was, but I was sure it wasn't an earthquake. A couple of days later, somebody was talking, we're talking about, you know, certain underground facilities that went away, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what I can tell you is that the more each of us, and, and by the way, what I do, everybody can do. Okay? I'm just a way shower. I'm at the head of the curve, but it doesn't mean, you, you know, you're not right behind me or somebody else isn't right behind me. And my belief is that all of us are discerning when we're being fed stuff that's there to try and um, take down our awareness or to, to make us think one thing when we already think something else. So one of the ways I handle it is I, I you know, I don't watch much of the news per se, and I, I pick and choose. I cherry pick what I'm going to check out. And then I, I do watch the comedy shows about the news because sometimes that's very funny and you can learn something and be entertained at the same time. And I, I heard somewhere that at one point, uh, one of the comedy shows that put, puts out the news, it was like 80% of people in age 20 to 30, that's where they were getting their news. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the uh, I asked uh, David Ike uh, uh, last uh, Thursday night, I asked him the same question. And I tend to ask all of my guests, uh, you know, how do they get the news and, and how do you avoid, you know, getting depressed? Because I found I just stopped watching the news. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd rather read it. Right. And I was mm -hmm. asking uh, Ike about that. And he goes, you know what? I just don't watch. I don't watch television. I don't watch the news. I read the paper mm -hmm. and that allows me the disconnect. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want to read the article, I just don't read it. But exactly, you know, with 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 the news on television, it's being forced onto you. Right. 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 If you turn on the news and oh, by the way, about, I don't know, maybe five, six, maybe even 10 years ago, I was told by my guides that there's like five things that hook you into mass consciousness. And that mass consciousness is like a wave that you're pulled along with. And if you unhook from those, then you're less likely to fall for whatever is being spoon fed. So reading the newspaper, your morning coffee, I gotta have my morning coffee, you know, shake it up, have tea, have it at 11 in the morning, have it at one in the afternoon. Don't always have to have it in that exact moment. Um, and, uh, let's yeah, see. That's a couple other habits, you know. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's really. Yeah. And listen, we have to take a break. Let's do it right here. And when we come back, let's talk about global consciousness. Let's do that. Let's talk about the issues that are going on right now. I feel, I feel that we're all seeing the darkness, Maureen, and we need you more than <laughs> ever. Tonight, our guest is Maureen St. Germain. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. More with Marine right after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Katini, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. Fade or not, things are never what they seem. For the past century, forbidden subjects such as UFOs, backward engineering, human abductions, secret space programs, underground bases, suppressed free energy devices, and other fantastic notions have tested the human mind, forcing it to decipher fact from fiction, chronicling what he calls the alternative narrative. Author Brad Olson gets down to the middle of it all in his best-selling book, Future Esoteric, now released in a second edition by CCC Publishing. And now, you can get Future Esoteric at a special price, plus another free book by just using the promo code JIMMY when you check out. Just click on the Future Esoteric or CCC Publishing banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go Bagley Tepe. 
IRA and 401k account holders. Are you crossing your fingers for the stock market to continue its bull run or hoping for a miracle to pay off our $19 trillion national debt? American Bullion wants you to think for a moment. If we go through another significant stock market correction and things begin to unravel, you could suffer some serious losses. On the other hand, gold is a proven long-term asset that could hedge and protect your retirement accounts from getting washed away. Call American Bullion now and let them show you how easy it is is to transfer your existing IRA or roll over your 401k into a gold IRA. American Bullion has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and is a leader in gold IRAs. With just one call, their experts can explain everything there is to know and get you started with a free gold IRA guide. Call 1-800-545-2525. Don't procrastinate. Save your retirement. Call American Bullion now at 1-800-545-2525. That's one 800 Five four five twenty five twenty five. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're of the Honey Brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boom boxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks and use the promo code JCRTWS and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple, just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner, go back Lee Tepe. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. Welcome back to Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, the one and only Maureen St. Germain. Tomorrow night, Margot Mateus is going to be here live in the bunker. Wednesday night, Caroline Corey is going to be here. And, of course, Thursday night's going to be open lines with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom. Now, Maureen, right before the break, um, I was talking about the darkness that if you do listen to the mainstream news, uh, there's no reason to get up tomorrow. The world is at its end, right? I mean, it's it's coming at us from all directions. And it doesn't matter if it's a Zika virus, if it's ISIS, if it's the problems in the United States and this election year, whatever it is, uh, it, it just feels dark out there. And then... I have so many guests on this show, and I talk to so many people, uh, malevolent, benevolent um, uh, advice coming at us, and and it, 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 I don't know what to uh, what to, what and who to trust right now. What is really going on? I think we're being spoon fed a bunch of garbage so that we will be controlled, and I don't think anybody's falling for it. And the more people you know look at that and dismiss it the more they try to make it happen. You know, it's kind of like trying to tell someone what to do. The more you tell them, the less they'll do it. So they're actually, you know, digging their own graves. Um, I had a friend once that said, uh, you know, when you're in, a, in trouble, stop digging. But these guys that are trying to get us to believe in all the, the bad stuff that's happening are actually causing the bad stuff to happen in the first place. So... I don't. I don't buy the news. I don't. Um, I don't watch it on TV. And my take is, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's going on that's that's problematic. There's a lot of stuff, but we can antidote anything. 
and we have the power to turn it around. If we stay in a place where we say, you know, there's no reason to get up in the morning, yeah, we're going to stay down and depressed, and that's pretty tough. To, that's pretty tough. I mean, it's a tough place to be, and we've all been there. We've all had days like this or months like this where we just we just aren't motivated, and we, we can't seem to get past that that darkness. But in truth, if you just ask, show me how much I'm loved, show me what the world is really like, you're going to get a surprise and a good surprise. So my first thought is, you know, take that stuff with a grain of salt and then decide what you're going to believe and let the rest go. Because most of the stuff that's on the news is simply not true. And the stuff that is true, it's, you know, one of the things that I know about becoming fifth dimensional is that we're creating the future. So if we're constantly being fed garbage, then we'll get more of the garbage for the future, which is those who would wish us to fail want. That's what they want. But if we look at what they're feeding us and say, well, that's that's not for me. I'll pass. I'll be hungry, but I'm not taking that food. Right. It changes it, changes the reality. And uh, what is the fifth dimension? Um, I have spoken to you about this so much in the past, but... It's it's fascinating to me. For the audience, really quick, take them through that. What is the fifth dimension? Fifth dimension is a place we're all becoming. Fifth dimension is a dimensional consciousness where we have access to our divine nature all the time. And because of that, it's easy to make, I'll use the word wise choices or good choices. You know, if I say to you, you you know, I'm I'm looking in my date book and I see that you live exactly where I need someone and I'm friends with the Dalai Lama and he's coming through town. Can he stay at your house? What's your answer? Yeah. Right. 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 So that's the same environment of 5D. The opportunity you're going to ask me about, you know, what does he eat? When's he coming? Even if you're going on vacation, you're going to change the schedule. All those things are around. Yes. The possibility of saying no to a guy like that isn't in your, in your, in your real world. So you wouldn't say no. And that's what happens when we become fifth dimensional. I'm just as concerned about you as I am about me. I'm just as concerned about the outcome of a deal that I'm going to make with someone for myself as I am for them. I want it to be right for both of us. You know, kind of reminds me of a cute story. A guy I worked with was telling me how he was selling his hot car. And then his son, who just finished law school, came to him and said, you know, I want to buy your car, dad. And he talked his father into selling it for like $10,000 less than the dad was hoping to get to buy a new car. And he's telling this story at work and he's kind of rueful. You know, I can't believe I let my son talk me out of that car like that. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, but just think of how proud you'd be of him if he'd gotten that deal from some stranger. Exactly. So we're moving away from that right. to a place where we want people to succeed and we want people to get a benefit from working with us or from interacting with us. And we want it to be win-win. And it's, it's, we don't see the, the, in the old paradigm, we were separate from each other, but now we are starting to realize that we are each other. And if we're each other, if, if I fail, then you fail. And, and so we want to see one another move ahead together. We don't want to disparage somebody or hurt someone because we're hurting ourselves. We used to be uh, humanity. We used to be 5D, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. We, we looked at life that way and each other that way. Somewhere it got disconnected and we're getting back to it. But why, why did we move away from the 5D? Well, I think it was a way to explore a version of expression that we wouldn't have explored otherwise. You know, the, the very separate kind of energy to see if we could find our way back. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, it, it, and in today's world, we're now merging both the, I'll say the masculine way, which is very aggressive and self-centered with the feminine way, which is very soft and receiving. And I'll give you an example of a farmer who's got a gas line that's going to come through his property. And he goes to the gas company and, the, you know, the government, doesn't have much say because the government has already approved the line. And he says to them, look, I want a, a geomancer to check the property and see what the gas line is going to do to the property so we can balance the property. And the gas company says, yeah, why not? And they pay for the study and the changes that are needed, which is a few trees and a few energy devices. And then everybody wins. What can we do to prepare ourselves, you know, for things like that or environmental changes around us over the next 5, 10, 15 years? 
you have to stay plugged into information. So you have to stay plugged into the internet. You have to stay plugged into each other. You have to talk to people. You have to ask questions and you also have to ask for help. You know, I'm a firm believer in, in the, in the world that exists outside of my body and the angels and the beings of light. And there's a brand new group of beings that have appeared out of the 11th dimension called the serendipities. And they just make magic happen. And I, I'm not even the resource for that. Just one of my people, one of the guides that work for me had this information come through and I started using it and I'm blown away by how they're solving things. So you're in a situation that you're not happy with, call in your angels, call in your guides. And you don't even have to believe in angels or guides. That's the cool thing. You don't have to believe in them. You just say, okay, look, this lady Maureen says, do it. I'm trying it. And watch what happens. Everything will shift. Everything changes. Uh, last week we had uh, Tom DeLong on the show. Mm. And uh, one of the things that Tom had said, and it really shook up uh, a lot of our listeners and and I'm still receiving a lot of email on it. He says that uh, there is a connection to religion and alien tech and and how they are around us. That's a pretty bold statement. Uh, how do you respond to something like that? Well, the first thing I got when you said that was I was reminded uh, about 10 years ago or 15 years ago, I was told to build a grid that would merge all the world's major religions and that it would it would find that common thread and and smooth out their differences because they could no longer work together and merge that way so they needed another layer and i wasn't even trying to make this happen i'm just in meditation and i get told to take this step so i did so the first thing is um you know religion was simply a tool to educate people because they weren't educated any other way you know there weren't books there weren't resources and then you know religion's kind of gone um into its own power you know power for its own sake right and as far as um et's go for sure i believe that et's influenced or impacted world thought and world religion you know the the well-known uh renegade egyptian pharaoh akhenaten was probably an ET. Everybody sees that head and looks at him and says, it's got to have been an ET. And yet he was the being, he was the man on the earth that moved everybody to the whole idea of one God. Right. She have unified thought that there would one final source. And so that's useful. That's helpful. That helps humanity work together because if all of, all of people we're praying to are still end up reporting to one place, it kind of smooths it out. When you uh, you bring up a good point when you say that you know religions were used for, uh, I guess the better word is uh, the dissemination of information and the control of the people. Control, one hundred percent. You know, and when you Chris Rock said it so well in one of his stand up routines, but he, it, I swear, it's one of the smartest things ever said by a human. When he said, "Look, you know." Uh, um, the, the the village found out that, you know, this bad pork was killing everybody, right? <laughs> so they come down and go, you know, God said, you know, we got to figure out a way to, you know, to keep people from dying. Right. So the leaders come down and go, you know what? God says, don't eat pork. Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and everybody lived. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a. But there was no other way to get everybody to understand. You right. can't sit there and break it down for everybody. They don't get it. But if you say God says, mm -hmm. they get that and they understand that, mm -hmm. and they accept it. They might not even understand it, but they'll buy it because it seems like well, somebody else, you know, who knows more than me is saying it, so I better take it. And I love Chris Rock. I think he is a modern day. A hero because he just totally nails things. Every subject he touches. Yep, 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 yep. And, <laughs> He's well, just amazing. You know, and and then he said, uh, not to dwell on Chris Rock, but then he said, you know, if when I'm when I die and go to heaven, the the question of me eating a pork sandwich is not going to come into play. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to come up. That's true. Uh, you know, I'm That's paraphrasing, so but it was uh, something similar to that. Um, now, uh, I got uh, uh, from one of our listeners, he sent me a list of questions uh, 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 about you, and they're all interesting. And I don't know quite where he's going with this, but the first question he had was, where did you get 
you receive your family name, St. Germain? I was doing a numerology chart for someone else. And in the middle of it, I got a very specific download that I was to change my name. And I thought to myself, only weird people do that. And uh, then I was told, first I was told to do the numerology on it. And so I did the numerology. What am I supposed to do with this? And I didn't get any answer. So then I said, am I supposed to change my name? And I got yes. And I thought, oh man, that's, I hate that idea. And so I was in the middle of a divorce and I called my attorney and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I could just take this name instead of my maiden name when I, when I uh, get divorced. And, and the guy, my attorney said, well, uh, how do you spell that? And I told him, and then I'm about to say, you know, I'm just thinking about whether that's possible because it was only been, you know, like maybe 10 minutes from when I'd gotten this message when I'm on the phone with him. And he said, um, you know, it's a good thing you called me right now because we're filing the paperwork tomorrow. And if, if you had waited, it, it would have been too late. And one of the signs from the, from, um, uh, the esoteric community is that when your feet are put to the fire and you're given the opportunity to, to leap or not, you really have to leap. You have to go with it. And so I did. But that's not the first time I was given the name St. Germain. The first time I was given the name St. Germain was when I was 11 years old and I couldn't find a name for my confirmation name. And, you know, the nuns and the teacher were getting in my face and they were, you know, fussing at me. And, and they said, you know, if you don't come up with a name, we're going to give you one. And I, I just looked at them and said, as far as I understand, this is my decision and I'll give it to you when I get it, you know, and I couldn't find one. Then I came across the name of St. Germain. I went, okay, that's it. There's, um, I, can, can we uh, talk about the Merkaba a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. <laughs> well, me too, actually. <laughs> we, um, uh, I don't know if you've heard the story and I'm not going to uh, get into it deeply, but we saw, we were part of the, uh, the mass sighting out at Contact in the Desert. And I saw some pretty amazing things. But one of the things that I saw there, I was, you know, one of hundreds that saw the same thing was this green orb. And um, the Merkaba tech has a lot to do with orbs, too. It's ancient. And was that the tech that we were seeing out there at Contact in the Desert? I don't know what I saw. I, I, I don't have an explanation for it yet, and I'm searching for that. So you saw a green orb in real time? A, a big one. And I saw it, I saw it go from Earth uh, up to the stars and then make a left-hand turn and take off into space. It took about five minutes. But wow. I wasn't the only one that saw it, Maureen. And this thing was big, too. It wasn't small. It was, you know, I don't know. It was a, it was a couple of miles away. So it was potentially, I'm guessing here, but maybe a 100 or 200 feet in diameter. And, wow. it, and it was green and it was chrome. Interesting. Well, I've had a green chrome orb in a lot of my photos, but they're there. It's like a baseball size. It's not that big. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I imagine, well, you know, in the Merkaba work, we talk about that right hand turn because that's the shift dimensionally. That's your shift to the next dimension is a right hand turn. And it looks like a right hand turn to us, but it really isn't. It's simply a way to shift energetically. And if you think about the Merkaba, the true star tetrahedron with where you could put six sticks in it, you know, one top to bottom and one in either angle, then that right hand turn literally gets you into one of those other angles and you can move quickly into changing direction. So it's almost like you're changing your header. It's as if you had a vehicle that had a front and a back and then it had two more sides that would allow you to change direction. And you would just simply say, okay, let's go to the, the, you know, the port side. That's now the front. And boom, it's gone. And that shifts them up into another dimension. And, and I've, you know, there's a lot of information out there on that. Um, and I've worked with that energetically to create stuff. Um, that's, that's a whole other matter. <laughs> well, that's interesting that you said the right-hand turn. The position that I was in, looking at it, it made a left. But if somebody would have seen this from the other side, right, in front uh -huh. of it, 
it would have been a right-hand turn. Yes, I did say right-hand turn, and I don't know why I did, because it truly is the 90-degree turn. Yeah, So it shouldn't degree. matter whether it's right or left, yeah. Interesting. Well, mm-hmm. that was my point to you. It wouldn't yeah, matter, Yeah, interesting. Right? I don't know the answer on that one. Wow, wow. And and you have seen the same uh, – it's not the same. Well, it could be. You're it saying that be. yours but were works, based – Yeah, I mean, you know, like I – I have not seen them in real time, but I see them on my pictures. And um, the, they're about as big as a baseball. Not any bigger than a baseball, but they're chrome looking. Very chrome looking. Yeah. I got a great picture of one. I was taking a picture of the trees and the the pine trees up in Seattle when I used to live up there. And, you know, this big green ball in the middle of it. What do you what do you make of not only what we saw um, and we we were also it was a big crowd and the, the, we had night vision too as well right oh nice and, yeah yeah and sad. and this this stuff was going on now look Maureen I don't want to sound like the crazy dude but I I, I am the crazy dude now right <laughs> and, and and I saw it but I'm so thankful that there were you know hundreds you know of contact in the desert potentially thousands of people happened to see this the same thing that was going on in the skies but it was definitely there this wasn't satellites it wasn't you know, it, to me, terrestrial stuff that we're all familiar with and looking at in the skies. And this this was really going on for all of us. Was that was that E.T. winking at us? You know, was it a show? I don't know, but I will I will throw a monkey wrench into this and say, you know, there is technology that can be used to project images and to fool the masses. Um and it has been used already to get people to see stuff that really isn't there. You know, it's like a form of a, you know, of a, of a I'll use the word floodlight, but that's a really amateur way to say it. Right. Um, but there is technology that can, you know, throw something into the sky and make you think it's moving and, and or looks like Jesus or, or other things when it's not. And, and you, you almost have to use your, you know, your inner uh, connection to validate. Well, what am I seeing? You know, wh- um, it it you know it's 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 interesting because everybody was there for contact in the desert and they saw it. But I would be more trustworthy of what you see in those night vision uh, binoculars than I would trust what I'm seeing with a naked eye like that because it's too um, easy to be made a fool of there. Um, oh, I don't dismiss that idea. I don't because if you really wanted to mess with a, you know, a, with a group of people, right. and, and that was done in Africa. And, and when I read the article about, you know, these people who were seeing some projection of Jesus, I just thought that's bogus. And see, that's the thing that happens to me. You know, I hear an announcement and I'll see something and I'll go, that's not what's really happening. And I, I you know, I, <laughs> so the benefit of doing this connection with your higher self and learning, you know, to connect with, through your Merkava allows you the ability to discern when you're being fed baloney and when you're, you know, you're getting the real deal. You know, one time I was, uh, my husband and I were driving on the outskirts of Rainier and uh, Mount Rainier uh, National Park. And I've got my eye on the mountain. It's so gorgeous, but we're climbing up over the mountain pass and the river's to the right and the river's lower and lower and lower as we climb higher. And all of a sudden my attention is drawn to the right where the river is and along comes an F-16. Now, I'm, I am a big fan of air shows. I'll go to an air show anywhere. I love the air shows. No doubt. And I see this, this, this F-16, and it goes whizzing by. And, and, and even though um, Vito's driving, I said, you have to look. You have to go look. And, and so he turns and looks. So I have a witness. It goes by, and it's at, it's at eyesight, at eye level. Now, I had had some energy stuff happen to me in the park, you know, and there's no uh, wires. It's lousy cell reception. It's a good place to have some magical stuff happen to you. And then without knowing why I said it, I said, watch, there's another one right behind it. And there was. But here's the spooky part. No sound. What? And I believe now that it was an ET that they were cloaked to look like F-16s because they wanted to get a good look at me. Because then I asked, you know, I asked my guidance, okay, um, was that, uh, was that an ET? Yes. Was it friend or foe? Friend. Why were they here? Well, they were checking you out. 
the the silence part doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't, unless they were ET devices or ships that were cloaked and they wanted to come in close and the easy way to do it was to look like they're a jet. So if anybody else sees them, you know, I, I, I have to ask you, what did Vito say? Uh, Vito didn't say much, but I did run it by somebody that, um, um, is an ET contact and she had had a similar experience where she had seen what looked like a, a normal, you know, jet or whatever, and was no sound. And she knew right away it was an ET. Because a guy, um, uh, man, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to offend, but, you know, but a, a physicist, you know, he right, right. A science that, guy, right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> a guy's going to look at that, uh, immediately in a, in a, in a logical mechanical sense, right? He knows planes. He knows what they sound like. He knows jet engines. He knows the military, <laughs> right? And, and if you're going to see a plane that's not making any sound whiz by you at eye level, um, I, I'm very curious to what he had to say about that, if he had an uh, answer for he, it. His, his standard statement is, I'm married to a magical woman. <laughs> I can't explain that one at all. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I have to say, the um, uh, the way that it went down at contact, it just – it. The 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 odds of all of this going on uh, over, uh, you know, one of the biggest, you know, UFO conventions on the planet. Right. Everybody's there. And this happening on a Saturday night for everybody is way beyond a, a numbers coincidence. Right. That, yeah. And that's a part that kind of concerns me, you know, and, and although I've never been out on James Ranch, um, Vito has been out there plenty of times and. He's seen plenty of stuff out there, but, and I love that man, you know, he's amazing. And the work they're doing out there for that program to make people aware. But I, I also, you know, don't discount the fact that, you know, the, the fastest way to make a liar out of all of us is to give us one false flag or one false piece of information and then, then expose it and then see all that stuff you're talking about. It's all full of shit. Right. It's, right. Yeah. So. Yeah, That's I, the thing that concerns me. And and gosh, a green orb. Nobody's ever heard of a green orb before. Well, yeah, you see, this is the, I thought about before I went public. I did it on this <laughs> show and I did it on Coast and I told everybody exactly what I and I thought about that. You know, what if this plays out in, in, in to some mundane explanation? Right. Or some hoax. You know, or or a some hoax. hoax. Right. Right. And you know what? It doesn't change what we saw. It doesn't change if it's a hoax and I saw it, right, and it was a big play. Well, then I was a witness to that, too, as well. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, yeah. but I saw what I saw and I can't explain. I just can't. I. It was a mind-blowing uh, experience. Yeah. Well, well listen, yeah. uh, we're going to take a break right here. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Akashic Records. Cool. And my one of my favorite, you know, and I'm still to this day, you know what's funny, Maureen? Um, I used to picture the Akashic Records like a bunch of computer terminals and a library. That was my mind. We're going to discuss all of that. Right after the break, our guest tonight, the one and only Maureen St. Germain. We'll be right back. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black, KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzonel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo, Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Foodforliberty.com sells high-quality, storable foods from Numana. And right now, take advantage of our summer special. Purchase two family packs and we'll send you a pro pure water pitcher, a $70 value, free. This premium pitcher is ideal for use with just about any water source and removes more contaminants than other brands. And it comes with a filter that lasts up to two full years. Whether you need to be prepared in the event of an emergency, you're an outdoor sports enthusiast, 
Harvest. New Mana is known for high quality, great tasting, GMO free, super nutritious food with no chemical preservatives. And with a 25 year shelf life, you can't beat the feeling of being food secure when you need it most. Go to foodforliberty.com right now for great tasting, high quality, storable foods from New Mana. Buy two family packs and get the Pro Pure water pitcher free. It makes good sense to be prepared. Get it at foodforliberty.com. Did you ever turn to your radio for your favorite talk show to find that it's been preempted for this? In the air, a deep right center. Back goes Lewis to the wall, and it's all here! Or this? And I'm ashamed of you, Hillary, for voting for it. Do you have a favorite talk radio program that's not available in your city? Just go to TalkStreamLive.com for links to the best streaming talk radio shows. At TalkStream Live, you will find live talk shows 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All your favorites are here. With such a large selection, you will also discover some new favorites. On the go and still want to listen? With the mobile smartphone, simply type TalkStream Live on your internet browser. Now you can take internet radio with with you. You will also find hundreds of music, news, and sports streams. Best of all, the TalkStream Live directory is free and there's never a login required. Remember TalkStreamLive.com, the fastest route between you and your favorite talk radio show. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Maureen St. Germain. And she assists people in meeting and surpassing their life dreams and goals using the laws of quantum physics and sacred geometry. And now, Maureen, the Akashic Records. This is a this is a this is an area I think that for most they don't really understand. They don't understand what it is and and how to access it. And so let's start there with the definition for the Akashic Records. Well, I think your picture that you drew us before you took the break was pretty cool. You know, a library that moves. Um, you know, when I was younger, I could see it and I just didn't know what I was looking at. Um, in fact, I often thought there will come a time when people will be able to access knowledge through their intention rather than through a book. And that was before the internet. So that's how long ago I thought about that. And then when the internet came along, I thought, well, maybe that's what I saw. But I don't think so anymore. I think what I was seeing was the Akashic Records. And I will tell you that when I, I normally, when someone's, um, you know, aligned with the Akashic Records, they're not actually in the records themselves. They're on the threshold or the edge of that field because you don't go in per se, because if I go in to look at my records, let's say, I'm going to be like the protagonist in Back to the Future where he sees his own picture disappear, his own face disappear off the family photo. Right. So, you know, you create, you know, a goofy loop if you were to actually go in. So you're actually working with guides or, or an energetic council that puts you in touch with the information you're seeking. And generally, there is not the time lag that you and I have. So when a client, for example, wants to know something and then they decide to hire someone and then they find me, I've already gotten the information and it's already started to download so that when I talk to them, I always start out with a opening remarks. And this is not typical. Most um, people who are reading the Kashyyyk Records start out with questions, but I always start out with opening remarks. And the people who study with me are taught that system because I feel it's very strong to access whatever it is the person was wanting to know. And, and more often than not, people say, well, you just answered my first five questions. So the Akashic Record is a field 
it's the field we live in. It's the, it's the soup we live in, but you know, it's like Russian dolls. When we're in third, we can't see fifth. When we're in fifth, we can see third. When we're at 11, which is where the Akashic records are located, we can access all the way down. So what we do is we build like a tunnel or a direct line to the 11th dimension where the Akashic records reside. And then we're reading the field at that level. But at the same time, you could say the Akashic records are in you. And it's a very, you know, confusing kind of analogy but the easy way to look at it is to say it's like a movie theater it's like movies it's the minute you pull out a movie you're actually in it as well as looking at it and it changes as you change so the cool thing about the records is that when you're in it when you're working with someone they can actually change the reality in the moment and the other side of it is sometimes they get information that they will choose not to change the reality like the time a woman asked me about um, her future roommate and the record keeper said, well, you know, be fine until the luster wears off. And she, she said, well, luster, what luster is this guy not going to stay? And she asked when he was going to leave. And she said of this year, cause it was like six weeks away. And she said, well, maybe I shouldn't rent to him. And the record keeper said, you're no, because this man will lead you to the, to the roommate of your dreams because of timing. So when this guy would leave, then the roommate she was looking for would now be looking for her. What is in the Akashic Records? Everything that you've ever done, all the alternate versions of you choosing the other version, you know, like a couple decides to get divorced, one version of the reality, one version of the records, you know, takes that divorce to its completion. The other version stays together and the energy stays there until the couple stops feeling guilty about their decision. So they're actually funding it with their guilt, for example. So the records show all the possibilities of your choices. And the strongest one is obviously the most visible. And it also shows your potential futures and how this all interacts on top of each other. Does Pretty it go, does it go into the far future or is it just the immediate? Um, I think that that answer is uh, dualistic because generally for mundane stuff or everyday stuff, you're not going too far into the future. You're going right. a little bit into the future. Right, right. But at the same time, there are soul agreements and there are um, uh, decisions that you've made that at a certain age, you're going to you know, turn on or you're going to connect with some piece of information that's going to flip where you're at. No matter where you are, you're going to like do a catch up, you know, and, and sometimes you can be told something you are absolutely opposed to, like the lady who was having a session with me and her husband had died suddenly, you know, a year and a half ago and she was still grieving and, and very clearly she was told in the records, you're going to find love. You're, you're going to be in love. And she said, no way, you know, I'm not ready, blah, blah, blah. You know, and she was arguing with me and I said, well, you know, I don't really care. I don't have any attachment to this, but this is what I'm being shown and that you are going to meet someone and it's going to be magical. And, you know, Three months later, she calls me back. Okay, okay, you were right. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> no doubt. Well, what about, uh, okay, two questions. You can answer them at the same time. Uh, can you tell when, how long somebody's going to live? That's one. That would be like in the far future. And the second half of that is, what about past lives and reincarnation? How far back does it go? Well, uh, re uh, Far, how far back it goes is kind of a funny question to me because it's like looking at a root or peeling an onion, you know, this. Right. So the, those pieces are really like part of who you are in the moment and whatever you need. Now, I will tell you that I, I made a contract when I started doing other people's uh, records. I didn't want to get into this for entertainment purposes. Right. I was only interested in helping others. So people ask me, every once in a while, people ask me a question that's totally frivolous. Like, you know, who was I or was I queen this or was I king that? And <laughs> right, right. I just laugh and say, you know, I'm sorry. I asked the record keepers to never give me that kind of information. I don't, I don't even want to ask because I've already told them I don't want to know. So um, that's part of it. And then, then the first part, how far into the future? Yeah, if it somebody... depends upon a lot of things, you know. 
It really does. Yeah, because I, I I totally get. I'm asking these questions for the audience because they they are thinking all of these things that I'm asking. And what, well, you know, there's a. I mean, we have a blog called Akashic Records Blog. Dot com, and I wrote a story in there about an incident that happened with my husband. I was seeing him being taken out, and um, he was on an industrial job. He was trying to determine the cause of a fire and. I kept seeing an industrial accident where he would die. What? And I kept asking, what am I to do with this information? Just because I have it doesn't mean I'm supposed to tell him. Right. Finally, I got clearance that I could tell him. And I said to him, you know, are you, are, have you checked in? Have you checked in with your guidance on whether or not you should go back to that site? And he said, well, if you told me not to go, I wouldn't go. And I thought, oh, my God. So then the next day, he says, I want you to open up the Akasha Records. Now. This is how I think, you know, you're, you're thinking on behalf of the audience, this is how I think. I think he's going to ask me questions like, is it my time to go? Can this be changed? Right. Is this an alternate version of the reality? You know, like that. Exactly. Oh, oh no, that's not what went down. What happened? He said to me, what caused the fire? Now, keep in mind, he's been on this case for six months, but I'm not paying any attention to the cases he's on. So I don't know what's going on. Right. And out of my mouth came the words, the fire was set to cover up a couple of murders. What? And I was so freaked by that information that I pulled myself out of the records and I looked at him and I'm, I'm almost embarrassed. And I said, oh, my God, um, that's really weird since no one died in that fire. And he looked at me and he said, yeah, actually, three people died. Yeah, you better have your, your facts straight, right, if you're going to start. I had no idea. Wow. And the record keepers were spot on. Wow. And I wrote about that on the blog. So you guys can go read it if you want. But I, I essentially told him that the fire was set to cover up a couple of murders and three people died in that fire and he had not yet found the cause because it had been set. You see, when he's doing scientific investigation, he's looking for a scientific cause. So we know which insurance company is supposed to pay the bill like that. That's how that goes. And so in his case, um, once that information came out, you know, then he knew he was looking for a different cause, that it, that it literally was set. And, and he could see that there were signs leading to that. But as the physicist, he's not supposed to be looking for arson. He's supposed to be looking for a scientific cause. Right, right, see? right, right. So um, it was very interesting because the case kind of dragged on. And finally, after, you know, a couple more months, he actually told them what I said. And I said, I cannot believe you have a Ph.D., and you're telling them what your psychic wife said? And he said, well, in investigation, if you can't find a cause and you can't find any scientific reason why something has happened, it's okay to talk to a psychic. What do you say to somebody uh, uh, that says you can't change somebody's destiny? My response is um, there's more than one version of your destiny. You know, I believe that people pass over what I would call death points. And so you might pass a death point where you actually get really sick and close. To I have a client who is on death row, you know, and, and the doctors all said, if your liver doesn't start to get regenerated within six months, you know, it's the beginning of the end. Well, she's perfectly healthy now, five years later, and her liver started regenerating a year after they diagnosed her with liver disease. Hmm. And so... People can change their mind. People can change their destiny and people can choose. You know, one of the things that I've been taught by my guides is that there's five choices to every decision, two below grade and three above grade. Two below grade, most people aren't even going to think about. The two above grade are good choices, but the one is like the divine choice that advances you the fastest and moves you along the continuum of evolution the fastest. You know, and it's like, you know, how do you want to go through school? You're going to go through school skipping grades or you're going to go through school, you know, take every test, every do every piece of homework. Sometimes you want to take the fast route. Sometimes you want to take the scenic route. Right, right. What do you mean by below grade? Uh, well, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't use polarity words. So I wouldn't say something is good or bad. I would just simply say, well, it's, you know, you're above grade, you're moving towards God, or you're below grade, you're moving away from God. Ah, uh, <laughs> Well, the, so the two below grade decisions would be the easy road is what you're saying. The, mm. the less resistant. <laughs> Let's just say they would be the not God choices. 
<laughs> you know, I give my daughters uh, since they were, you know, since they were born, you know, I, I told them the same thing uh, all the time, constantly. There's there's the right way. There's the wrong way. And, you know, the wrong way is always easy. The right way is hard. It's hard, but you're going to be happy in the end. You know, it's really it's really true. You know, yes and no, you know, right and wrong. The decision is right in front of you. And, you know, you know, the right way. Most people just don't want to take the right way. The wrong way, the cheating on the test, right, <laughs> is the easier path. Why do people do that when they know they know they're making the wrong decision? Um, because they're afraid of failure. Hmm. And, and, you know, truly the only reason people fib or cover up their mistakes or lie is because they feel like there's not enough. There's not enough love. There's not enough money. There's not enough something. So it's a fear of not enough. And sometimes we learn that as a child that there wasn't enough, you know? Right. So um, I, I always said yes to my kids. It was so hilarious. One time one of my sons looked at me and he said, she said yes, but she meant no. Because I, they said, you know, can I go to my friend's house? And I said, sure, you know, go, go check your jobs list and see if you've got everything done. Make sure your homework's done. And, and if your bed's made, go ahead and go. Have fun. And he just glared at me. He, we didn't want to go through the drill. He wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Why? You know, it's so funny. And the, the other thing, and I, I live by this is I would tell my, don't lie. I tell my daughter, just don't lie because you're going to get caught no matter what, because, mm -hmm. and, and me and your mom, whatever you think you're being clever at, we've already done it and got <laughs> caught. And, I have two things to say to that. I always said something similar to my kids, but I would say, if you lie to me, you get a double punishment, one from school and one from me. If you tell me the truth, there's no punishment. I don't care what you've done. No punishment. So they, they started telling the truth pretty early on because they figured out this is the easy way out, you know? Um, um, it, no, it's true. And Maureen, this is the thing. The advice that I'm speaking about and you are right now, this is the advice that we need to do ourselves. Right. Those basic, basic fundamentals. It, it, if you just do that, life gets really easy. And I absolutely, know absolutely. You know, my my first husband and I, I would cover things up because he had a temper and I was afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I didn't always give him the whole story because I was worried that, you know, he might react. But when I got married this time, I said to myself, I would always tell the truth. And one time when I did something and he didn't want me to give a tip to the window washer and I did, and I went behind his back and gave the kid a tip, I was a basket case by dinner and I had to confess. It was hilarious, you know. It's kind of like me and Rita. Are you listening, Rita? <laughs> of course she is. <laughs> now, now, how... <laughs> how how easy um, – now, I know we're going to take some phone calls, everybody. Just calm down. We'll do it in, a, in, a, in about 10 <laughs> minutes after the break. How easy is it for you to turn off and on the switch to access the records? Like with me, I'm going to ask you to do that for me right now. Um, how easy is it? I mean, is it always on? Do you have to turn it off, or is it always off and you have to turn it on? Well, for most people, they have to go through a process and turn it on. Um, my students say that I'm always on. I've never really thought about it. Um, but I will tell you that before I went on the show, I plugged in to the records and I also plugged into whoever I would end up talking to. So I just energetically made a connection to everybody who's going to get through. And I don't know who that is right now, but the record keepers do. And so I've gotten some, that's why I'll be able to be so cool. I know last time you were just like gasping. It was so cool. Yes. Well, <laughs> it's it, it, it's fascinating to me. And now how, uh, how does one start with the process now with the callers calling in or like for me right now, what is the first step? Do I ask a question? Do I make a statement? And the same thing for the callers. What, 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 what do we do? I would like to know their name. And I realize that you can't say their full name on the air or you're not likely to, but at least give me the first name and, and then they, they should get, just give me a question or give me some setup that I know what's going on. And then I'll just give them whatever comes in. Um, so, th and that would be what I would ask of you. You know, if I were doing an Akashic record reading, I would sit down and I would do a whole little 
I'll call it a ceremony that would allow me to connect into you in a very powerful way. And, you know, I would give you a set of information. What do you want to know about? I see. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, my name's Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Jimmy. Um, I, oh man. Uh, oh, Earlier oh. today, you were wondering um, how long you could stay on this um, Roadrunner race. Roadrunner race? Just, you know, this momentum that you've got going. Oh, 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 okay. Y you know what? That's actually a really good point. Um, uh, but before we get to that, before we get to that, um, I consciously uh chose i know this sounds strange but i want you to go with me on this okay i consciously chose we painted our house this weekend the outside of the house and i chose the color sage green right like a light olive green for the house um and i and i really i really i don't know if i've offended my neighbors I don't know if I made the right decision. I don't know. But is that color choice about myself and Rita and the projection going out of the house? Does that make sense? And it's been bothering me. Um, do you like the net result? Uh, we're, we're happy. You know, we're happy. And I guess, what I, you know, what does it say about us, that, that color choice and the way that our neighbors and our neighborhood look back at us? Well, you know, house colors are very interesting. Practically everybody has either a white house or like a gray house. Hardly anybody paints their house a color. And so anytime one person in a neighborhood paints their house a color, you're going to stand out. And people are going to notice and, you know, criticize because you don't like fall in line. Right. So I think that that's one thing. Um, but green is a really yummy color for growth and abundance and love. So, you know, at the end of the day, that color is a wonderful color to be projecting out into the world because that's who you are. So don't don't trip on it. Yeah, don't trip on it. And just, if, you know, if the neighbor says to you, wow, you painted your house green, you go, yeah, I'm sure you'll fall in love with it soon. Okay, now let's get You know, just kind of make a joke. About, yeah, 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 I know. Isn't it yummy? And if they go, well, not exactly. And then you can say, yeah, it'll grow on you. It's kind of like grass, you know? And you make a joke. Just make a joke. Okay. All right. Advice taken. So just, mm. just don't trip. Okay. All right. Okay. I can relax on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I did the same thing. I painted my house red and ever, and then I noticed that all the other houses in the neighborhood were white. I never noticed before. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really interesting point. Yeah. I, I can assure you we have the only sage green house in the neighborhood at, yeah. at least at this point, maybe somebody else will uh, go with the flow. Um, now this treadmill that, that Rita and I are on and yeah. it has been, the last uh, three years, four years has been, uh, it's like being shot out of a cannon. Mm -hmm. And we have not stopped working. Everybody else gets to enjoy days off and time off and vacation. We haven't done any of that in years. Um, and I don't see, I don't see it changing because we can't. I, that's, I, I, I feel that we cannot stop. We cannot take our foot off the gas. We've, uh, we've, uh, created this world and now we're stuck in it. What, what's in, what's in the future? Uh, I agree with you that you have done exactly that, but you're fulfilling your dreams. And so you could take your foot off the gas, but then you wouldn't be fulfilling the mission you set out for and the, the intention that you created when you created this treadmill. So for the time being, the bigger issue is how do you rejuvenate at night? And I'm going to give you some tools on that. Um, and how do you stay fresh in your own head so that even if you're not taking, you know, like a week off, like everybody else says, or a whole weekend off, like people do, you can look at your life and go, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. And, and one of the ways you do that is a success journal. So start to, you know, I know guys don't do journals, but put something by your bed or something and write, two or three 
things that, that worked out today, you know, and you think back to four or five years ago where you were or where you were 10 years ago or 20 years ago, and you can clearly see you're where you want to be and that you willingly signed up for this treadmill this time at this time. And a way to get stamina, and everybody listen up because this is a tool every one of you can use. When you go to bed at night, you can ask for an energetic Faraday cage around your bed to antidote all the EMF, all the Wi-Fi energy, all that stuff that's circulating in your house so that you get a peaceful rest. That's number one. Number two, there are rejuvenation chambers and there are healing chambers. And you can ask to be escorted to one or the other for either rejuvenation or healing. And that will also cut down on your stress because your body then will have a true rest and a true um, pullback so that you are really fresh as if you had been away for a while. And then, of course, the other thing is, you know, when you do have free time, a free moment, go take a mental Hawaiian vacation or someplace that you want to go that you've been to before that you can remember that you've done. Um, and I did the same thing for 20 years. You know, I was in a different city every single weekend, putting on workshops, putting on events, being physically out there. And, you know, that's why I'm so well known now, because people have seen me or have been in my space or they've learned from me. So, you know, you it's like you took that ticket to show up for all these gigs because that was what you wanted to take you where you're going. Mm hmm. And so now what you really need is the stamina and the recoup energy to take you past that. So do it every night. It's very powerful. I actually put it by my bed. I have a little note by my bed that shows a bed and, you know, like a peaceful bed. And before I climb in bed, I say that prayer. What? And and if you don't know what a fair, I know you know what a Faraday cage is, but to those of you who are listening, Faraday was a scientist and he invented a device, a cage, if you will, like a dog cage or a jail cell that prevented all kinds of the energy waves that come in to our space from penetrating. So you couldn't get a cell phone signal. You wouldn't be able to get Wi-Fi. None of that would be there. And your body then can really, really rest. And it makes a huge difference. I've taught it to a lot of my clients. And I have one client who's in her late 70s. She's going full steam ahead, just like you, every day. Huge energy and running a couple of big businesses. And she said that that tool has made a huge difference for her. And what do you, uh, we have uh, uh, 60 seconds before the break. What do, uh, there are so many uh, people out there that are jealous of, I'm not referring to me, I'm just talking in generalities here, about the people next to them. And they're always being pulled down by somebody else's uh, jealousy and, and what have you. What do you do with the negative people that are around you that do that? Um, well, I think jealousy is a form of wish fulfillment. And when we're when we have that energy, all we have to do is look at ourselves and say, am I doing everything I could to get what I want? And then the second thing is, you know, more power to them because somewhere somebody's going to help you along the way. And if you've got people around you that are jealous, the only thing you can do is pray for them, pray for their success, pray for their happiness, and pray that they unhook from their need to look at you and and they can start to work on their own life. And a lot of times that's all it takes is you're praying for their success. So in other words, when you feel the jealousy energy coming in or when you encounter that, and I've certainly encountered it, I'm sure you have too, the, the, the workaround is to say to yourself, okay, well, I'm praying for their success and I want to help as many people as I can get where they need to go. You know, and that's the cool thing. You know, you see people that are really successful and they are the most generous and the most kind. There are very few people at the top anymore that aren't willing to help someone else along the way. Thank you for that advice. That's a really good advice. Our guest tonight, Maureen St. Germain. Okay. I'm going to open up the phone lines. 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. More with Maureen. Right after this short break, stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob 
half of the Metal Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Are you tired of brown rust stains on your toilets, sinks, and clothes? Does your water smell and taste bad? Don't live with these problems anymore. HydroCare's revolutionary well water systems, available at Wave Home Solutions, gives you clean, healthy, great-tasting water from every faucet. They remove iron, hydrogen sulfide, sediment, and many other contaminants that are distasteful and damaging your fixtures. You'll be amazed how fresh and clean well water can be. Satisfaction guaranteed. Go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Fade or not, things are never what they seem. For the past century, forbidden subjects such as UFOs, backward engineering, human abductions, secret space programs, underground bases, suppressed free energy devices, and other fantastic notions have tested the human mind, forcing it to decipher fact from fiction, chronicling what he calls the alternative narrative. Author Brad Olson gets down to the middle of it all in his best-selling book, Future Esoteric, now released in a second edition by CCC Publishing. And now, you can get Future Esoteric at a special price, plus another free book by just using the promo code JIMMY when you check out. Just click on the Future Esoteric or CCC Publishing banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go back, Lee Teppy. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back to Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Maureen St. Germain. I've opened up the phone lines 323 323- 825-5045. They're jammed up. If you can't get through, just keep calling. And I'm going to say this for me. Maureen needs your first name. That's cool. The first person that says, what's up with my future? What can you tell me? You're going to get hung up on. Let's have fun. Ask a specific question. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. <laughs> Hello, Maureen. Hi. My name is Eric. <laughs> And what's your question? And you, well, my question is, uh, I heard what you said to Jimmy, and I'm totally resonating. Uh, I totally feel the uh, kind of getting stuck in the momentum of everything that's happening. And then I love what you said about the Hawaii getaway trip. So can, what what can I tell you? What can you tell me about what's ahead of my life? Or how, I, I'm, I'm just I'm curious to know if you can help me out there. 
Okay, well, I don't do curiosity, so let's just stay focused on what's going on. Is there anything you need, you know, direction on or any issues that are, you know, stressing you out? Yeah, I'm. well, I have a business, but I want to start traveling, and I want to start doing uh, investigative type of stuff, and I'm just kind of stuck. I'm not sure if I should just kind of – I'm having a hard time breaking away from my business and, and just going out and starting to uh, venture out and, and – and, and investigate and, and vacation and things of that nature. So I'm just okay. Kind of so okay. So part of the problem for you is you're not thinking big enough, and you got to start with yourself. So you got to start with a list of all the things you know you can do and you know you do do. And if you had more free time, what would you be doing? And just write it out because what's happened is you've limited yourself. You, you saw yourself in this business. You saw yourself as an entrepreneur, but you were never able to see beyond that. So you've got to take a minute or 10 minutes and write down, all right, wave a magic wand. I'm going to go be an entrepreneur that has more free time to do bigger things. What does that look like? And see yourself in that role. And in that role, you're advising your team. Right now, you don't have a good team. And the reason you don't have a good team is because you don't think anybody can do what you do. So you got to change your own self-image and you've got to change what you're projecting out there. And both of those things need to change before you can take that next leap. Also, you know, get a coach. That'll help you a lot because the coach will take you from where you're at to a new vision because you have to have somebody you're accountable to, but they're not your employee and they're not your boss. I totally need a coach. Can you recommend anybody? I totally feel you on that. <laughs> Eric. Jimmy, thank, can you be my coach? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Eric. Okay, you can I'll reach out to us go, tomorrow. We'll answer that. I'll answer that tomorrow. Yeah, there you okay. go. Thank you, Eric. All right. All right. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, my name's Nathan. I'm actually a first time caller on the show, but I've been listening for the past couple of years, and uh, it's been a wild ride, I have to tell you that. Where would you need help in? Uh, so I was interested in uh, basically I'm trying to get started in a new career. It's something that uh, I went to school for, but I just haven't been having any luck getting the right, you know, first opportunity. I've been doing a lot of contract work and it hasn't really been the right fit. And um, just kind of seeing what kind of advice um, that you could offer from your perspective through the Akashic Records. What's your um, industry? My industry is in design, and so it's anything from you know financial services to healthcare. Uh, it could be in any range of uh, businesses. But it's design. Yes, design like uh, graphic design, web design, uh, uh, you know, business okay, okay, cards, okay, okay, that okay. kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you're not showcasing your work in the public eye, so you need to find a way on your Facebook page or your YouTube channel. If you don't ha have either of those, you need to get those and start showing off your work and do creative work for imaginary customers. So you see mm -hmm. something out there that's currently being done. You think it looks sloppy. You don't like it. I could do better. You've had that feeling. I could do that one mm -hmm. better. Go ahead and do it for free. Send it to the company right. and say, I could do this better. Look at what I'm looking, looking at for you. And you're going to pick up clients right away. That'll grow your business. Do creative work for uh Hey, Nathan, thank you for the phone call and take the advice. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, yeah thank you so much. Hi, you're yeah. live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Maureen. Do it for free. It turn, free. turn me down in the background. Thank you. All right. That's, that's what happens. Let's just go to. <laughs> hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Hi. What's your name? Jeanette. And what are you looking for tonight? Um, I am curious about, I've, I've been trying to get a manager's job where I'm working and I keep getting kicked down and kicked down and kicked down. So I'm wondering if I should be still striving for that or backing off. <clears throat> Have they filled the job with someone else? No. But they see that you're not it. You need to find um, a new job. Yes and no. I, w I was offered some uh, smaller manager jobs at the time. 
Um, but they think I don't, I'm not qualified to, to run a bigger franchise. Got it. Well, <clears throat> one of the ways to prove that you are capable is to take the medium advancement and keep seeing yourself as the manager. And as you do this every morning, before you go to work, see yourself as the manager and how the manager would behave and dress like you're the manager and act like you're the manager, not in a bossy way, not in the know-it-all way, but in the caring way. Because a good manager gets to know his people or her people and knows what the team needs and is there to cover for people and is ready to be a resource of support. And sometimes someone who has smarts and skills doesn't realize that the best managers are people people. So work on your people skills and take the halfway spot, even though it's not to your liking, and prove how good you are so that the next job is easy for them to give it to you. Okay, I get that. I, that's what I've been doing. Thank Good. you so much, Jeanette. Great phone call, by the way. Take the advice. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Hey, Jimmy. How's it going, man? It's going good. Who's um, calling? What's your name? Hi, this is John. Uh, and uh, hi, Maureen. I've got a couple of quick questions for you. Okay. I've uh, read a book on uh, how to access the Akashic Records, and I've uh, done that myself, and I felt like I really got some good messages. But then another time, I, I felt like I was completely blocked, like I couldn't access it. I was sitting there doing everything the same way. Nothing was happening, and I was completely blocked and really frustrated. I was wondering if you could help me understand that. And my second question is, I have a uh, chronic condition that I felt like I got some answers from the Akashic Records on how to heal it. And I tried that a couple of months ago, and I've been trying it ever since, and it still hasn't healed, and I was wondering if you had any insights into that. Thank you for the phone call, John. Two great questions. How does he keep from being blocked? Okay, sometimes people are blocked when they have entities or energies in them, holding them back, uh, not wanting them to have access. And that's a whole other subject, but you can learn all about that in a book I wrote called Reweaving the Fabric of Your Reality. And that's, you know, it's interesting. I, I wrote my Akashic Records book, but it's only been published in Chinese so far. And that's another long story, but um, there may be a way to get people some of this information. The second thing is some of the teachers uh, that are teaching from the books that have been written so far are not, how shall I put it? They are telling people to open up to any energy that wants to come in. And I'm always very particular that you only open to energy that's of 100% God light because other energies from other resources can come in. So that's, that's part of it, why he gets blocked. And, and finally, he may have a block that he created from another lifetime that he doesn't want to know the answer. So all he, can, all he has to do is a simple prayer that he asks God to remove the block and if it's time and it's appropriate for him to undo that block, he claims that for himself, repeats that little prayer that he makes for himself three times. If he takes one of my classes on the Akashic Records, I'll give him that prayer. Um, and that will remove the block. That opens that up. And that even happens when you read someone else. Sometimes you hit a, hit a wall because the client themselves have put a block in place because they don't want to know, even though they do want to know. It's kind of like, you know, the self-sabotage thing. Now, as far as this chronic situation... Um, I think that he should keep working at it. You know, th the chronic thing very often is related to a past life. And we even have people that have been, uh, that work with my organization that do past life work and they change the past. So it changes the future. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Jenny. This is Nancy from Sacramento. Hi, Nancy from Sacramento. <laughs> I um, have a question. I've had a lot of interesting spiritual awakenings uh, just recently. And um, it seems that the ability to be healing seems to... People are coming into my life that are needing healing. And, and this wonderful, fantastic energy has, has uh, appeared. Um, 
I'm I'm kind of torn whether to continue with that or then I have the mundane life of going back to school and furthering my education and and possibly a, a great job. So um, I was wondering if you happen to um, have any pointers or ideas that I may concentrate on to so that what, I can get my answer. What's your major in college? Um, I'm a nurse. I'm an RN right now, and I work um, for CPS. And if I get my bachelor's with the public health, then I will get hopefully a position with them. Okay. So um, I'm getting that you that schooling is very important right now because it'll give you financial security. I do think you need to keep doing the healing work. And uh, what you need to do is find time for everything. So you've got to allocate time and say, okay, Thursday night is healing time. You know, and that, that's just your window. And the people who need healing, they have to come to you on that day. And you just, you narrow it, but you still continue to do it. I would not choose between those three. What I'm getting is that all three of those are part of your future. Okay. Okay. I so much appreciate your input and thank you and bless you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nancy. Great phone call. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Maureen. Hi, hello, Maureen. How are you doing? Good. What's your name? My name is Bill. Okay, and Bill, what's your question? question? Okay. Uh, okay, here's my question. Uh, first, a little setup. I feel I'm a very old soul, and I've been dropped into a family with some uh, very spoiled people who uh, they have been spoiled to believe in everything belongs to them and instead of sharing with the other members of the family. Uh, the question is, is Maureen Noah, if, uh, is, did she uh, access the Akashic record of, am I an old soul or am I not or am I, am I being an idiot or what? Just, you know, that's all, my, that's all I got to ask. Okay. So the answer to your questions is yes to all of the above. You are an old soul, and judging your family as being spoiled is not in your best interest. So when you look at them yeah. and you see that behavior, love them anyway. Love them anyway. Because loving them anyway gives them room to change. If you resist them by labeling them, they are forced to stay in that pattern. The only way you can make room for helping them change is to love them anyway. There you go. I have been. That, that, that's what I do. Thank Good. you, Maureen. Yeah. Well, stop Maureen, thinking too, that they're Thank spoiled you. then, okay? Stop <laughs> thinking that they're spoiled. Because even if you're not saying it, you're still holding energy. And I want to tell a quick story. At one okay. point, one of my sons was receiving approximately 5000 a year from me for schooling. I lost my job. I had no money in the bank. And I just written another check for $5,000. And I was devastated, and I remember thinking, oh, my God, when is he going to appreciate me? And the voice in my head said, when he's 28. And I burst out laughing because I thought, oh, my God, I thought he was going to do that tomorrow or the next day or a couple of weeks from now, not three years from now. I didn't have to wait the three years because my laughter at myself, recognizing that I was the one throwing up the wall with an expectation, and you are too. Get over it. There you go, Bill. So, Take the advice. So, so I don't want to. So I don't want to, I don't want, all I want to do is, is try to send love to them instead of feeling regret. Well, that's but they're the, being spoiled, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. exactly the point. And thank you for the phone call, Bill. <laughs> thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. Have a good one, man. Yeah, you too, man. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Say hi to Maureen. Hey. I'm, hi, Maureen. This is Sherry. Hi. And uh, hello. And I was just calling. I've had a lot of life changes recently, and I just uh, am kind of at a standstill. And um, you need some. You need wait. some get up and go. Yeah, I'm just kind of waiting it out and trusting in my faith that whatever is supposed to come is supposed to come. Okay, well, let's start manifesting of... what you need. So, number one, every day, ask God. Tell me how much I'm loved. Show me how much I'm loved. Number two, ask for a day of heaven on earth for yourself and everyone around you. Number three, ask the serendipities to make magic. You're going to have a magical future. 
and you're going to manifest it and you're going to look back at this moment in time and say everything shifted when I started asking God to show me how much I was loved asking for a day of heaven on earth for me and everyone else and oh by the way serendipities and the angels give me a break <laughs> there okay. there you go sherry okay thank you so much yeah you're you're more than welcome thank you for the phone call hi you're live on fade to black say hi to maureen hi you're... hi maureen hi jimmy hi this is, Le- this is lisa hi lisa hi um maureen i I have a question actually regarding a dream I woke up from late today. I I very rarely remember them, and this one was extremely intense and very vivid, and they often don't come back to me, but this one did in full force, and it was so um, amazing and real, and it, it, it just kind of um, moves me to, I wanted to call to ask, does that really happen on some level in some, you know, alternate reality or a version of reality it was so real and well, well, well lisa 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 draw. lisa you can't let us off the hook that easy <laughs> what was the dream about oh, oh my god Jimmy, it was it was so incredible i was um i don't know if i was in the city I'm, i i live in now but it was a city and i was um at this building and i looked up and there was it started raining i could see rain coming down outside the window and i went to the window and i looked up and i saw what I realized wasn't a, um, I thought it was a storm cloud, but when I saw it from the right angle, I realized it was an aircraft. And it had a line of light um, from the angle I could see on, on the side. And, but from all other angles, it looked like a storm cloud. And I realized, um, I took some pictures of it. <laughs> I thought to take pictures of it. And uh, that kind of got me in trouble because somebody saw me taking pictures, noticed I took pictures of it. Turns out it was a, a U.S. military craft, and it was like camouflage, like so it was like a storm cloud, and it could affect the weather. And this was this and, was the um, dream. In the dream, you saw a dream. storm cloud yes. that turned out to be an aircraft, and you took pictures right. of it, and you were going to get in trouble. Is there anything more to the dream? Yes, I, I, yeah, I, that's correct. Yeah, I want to hear the whole thing, Maureen. I don't know about you. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Okay. So what happened next? Well. I um I ended up being um followed and chased and um, um caught and they brought me onto the onto the craft and um it was it was just an amazing structure. It was very detailed and um very secretive and um I wanted to leave but they wouldn't let me leave because they didn't want me to tell anyone about it. Are you sure it was a dream? <laughs> Are you sure it was a dream? Well, that was her whole question. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah that's... Yes, that's that's what I'm asking. Ooh, man. I woke up and my muscles were all cramped and sore. Really? Jimmy, you take this one. You're yes, doing great. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I don't think it was a dream. I think it was a lucid experience. I think it was um, slightly out of phase with the 3D that we're currently in. And I think that that was an experimental thing that was going on and that you ha- somehow had access to it um, through your energetic t- connection to someone or something that's related to this. And I think you know what it is. I think you know who it is. And you're not saying because we're on the air. That's my hit on it. Okay. Does that sound right? Oh, uh, that sounds good. There was there was definitely someone there I had a connection with. I'm not sure if I I know right now who it was, but I knew them there. Yeah, yeah. So so that that being said, what I would do with that information is just see that it run that that movie of the mind that you already have in your head as a lucid dream, and change the outcome. Change the outcome that you get okay. away that you are able to be peaceably escorted off and they uh, they are gracious and kind, you know, like change it up really big in a way that makes you okay. comfortable and happy and run it in your mind a few times that way and you will actually change the outcome in the alternate reality. Lisa, okay. oh, Lisa. Wonderful. Thank can, you. No, hold on, hold on, Lisa. Hold on, I'm not done <laughs> yes, with you yes. yet. Do you Do you remember your dreams? I often don't, but when, once in a great while, I have these really intense dreams where I often wake up exhausted and <laughs> sore, and um, my muscles were all, like, I had trouble moving when I woke up today, 
and it took me a while to get, you know, I felt like I didn't, you know, I, I was really there. Wow. Um, wow. But, but wow. Meanwhile, I had these really vivid ones like this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. So, so there's there are versions of the reality, Jimmy, that are like out of phase with where we're at. And we are literally combining versions of the reality and we're also creating alternate versions of the reality to try things out. So it doesn't take much for the military to create a version of the reality that's slightly out of phase with where we're at to test something and then to bring it back. And she must have been caught in one of those scenarios and for some reason she was involved in some of that you know in in a number of my books i talk about multiple versions of you and that another version of you can come into your reality and have a experience with you and then they they leave but you have impacted each other in some way so it might even be that another version of her was one of the people on the spaceships that she felt she was connected with but there's definitely a, a connection with someone or some energetic version of her or some you know some connection to someone that she knows of in that dream that she knew and that's what pulled her into that scenario and so you just change the scenario. You nailed it. Yeah. Well, and and the other thing that I have for you, Lisa, is I mean, when when you started to recall the dream, did you have any problems remembering it, or was it like it was you know it was reality to you? Well, when I when I first woke up, I didn't have a uh, any recall of it, and I I was just like wondering why I was so sore and everything hurt and. Um, and then all of a sudden, I had a flash of a scene of it, and then the whole scene came back. This wow! Big time, like yeah, that's on. another that's another version of the reality when that comes in. And it, sometimes they come in in chunks like that. Sometimes a piece of it comes in, and then the rest of the pieces just kind of float in like puzzle pieces. Okay, that drops in, that drops in, that drops in like that. And all you know, in a few seconds, you have the whole thing. Lisa, thank you so much for the phone call. And you gotta <laughs> you gotta call in on Thursday night, and I want all the details. Will you give me that favor? <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank oh, you definitely. so much. I'll try to find some pictures that resemble it too. Oh man, you're the best, Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Maureen. You're Have welcome. a great night. You too. Now, Maureen, can I get? I, I I actually have a couple of personal questions for you. Um, can I get you to hang on uh, for about ten minutes after the break? Oh yeah, I'd love to. Okay, this is what I want you to think about as we head into the break. We were. We had some uh, friends over a couple of times uh, over at the house this week, and I at, I remembered something that I had heard, and I want you to think about this during the break because I need you to be specific. Because I, I had this recall of something that I had heard about maybe, and I'm guessing here, 25 years ago, like before Coast to Coast, right? Mm. Okay. That And I can't remember specifically when, but this is what I had heard. And uh, I don't, and I'm hoping that you're going to know who I'm talking about. I heard this conversation with this guy, um, and it was a, a late-night radio show. It might have been Bill Jenkins here in L.A. It might have been something else from around the country. But about being able to – you can dream – uh, it, or, or think into a new reality and you could wake up in the morning and absolutely you want to be a doctor and today you are a janitor tomorrow you can wake up and your entire past has changed you are now a doctor and you are now in another house and he had said that he specifically had done this in his own life a few times and that Tomorrow, he may not even be here. He could be gone. I'm going to go to a break. I need you to think about who this guy was because I can't remember who it was. And just think about that during the break. I'm hoping that you're going to know. Our guest tonight is Maureen St. Germain. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. More with Maureen after the break. Let's see if she can figure this out for me. I'll be right back with Maureen. Stay right there. Vivica Fox here, and you are 
listen to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-618-WAVE 888-618-WAVE or visit MyDryHome.com MyDryHome.com Ride the wave Wave Home Solutions For a healthy, comfortable home What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boom boxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks and use the promo code JCRTWS and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple, just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back Lee Tappy. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back, Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Maureen St. Germain. And thank you for all the calls uh, that came in. Maureen, you know, thank you for doing that for the audience. And, and you know, they uh, to take the time to call in on a radio show says a lot. And it's a lot of courage uh, for the audience, too, as well. So I want to thank uh, all, everybody that called in. It takes a lot of guts, you know, to come in. And uh, let it all hang out on a on a radio show like this. But uh, thank you for that, Maureen. Um, now, any thoughts about who I was referring to before the break? I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know. Okay, I can't remember. Um, was it Kevin Michael? I don't know. I I don't know. Okay, let's. Uh, and who is Kevin Michael? Uh, he's a guy who wrote a book on how to um, use your alternate reality version and you know, wake up with the dream of your life. Hmm. Hmm. So hmm. that's one guy. And then there's a dentist who does uh, a form of self-hypnosis. And I can't think of his name, um, but he claims that he has done that, um, you know, where he decides he wants to take a vacation. And so he lays down and puts himself in this altered state, goes to the beach in Bahamas, and then, you know, ha- gets come back with a suntan. So everybody wonders where did where did he go <laughs> in the middle of winter? So yeah, um, it, it it was such a it was one of those three hour conversations, right? And I'm listening to it late at night, and it was it was fascinating. And and I've I've now asked a few of my friends in the circle over the last week about this, and I can't I can't get anywhere. Uh, nobody seems to know who I'm talking about. But uh, well, Kevin book. Michael Kevin's book is um, Kevin Michael's book rather is called moving through parallel worlds to achieve your dreams. 
Okay. So maybe maybe that's him. And the other person is a, a dentist, and I can't think of his name. He has a very strange look, and he claims that um, you know you could be an, a time traveler. And oh, by the way, then of course the question comes up: Well, maybe he's one of the time travelers, and I totally think he is. You know, and they're just dropping in to help humanity get up to speed. Moving through parallel worlds to achieve your dreams, right here. Uh, Kevin L. Michael. Oh, it's M I C H E L. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. I'm going to look into this a little bit. Do you, do you know when that book came out? Um, I have it on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I can look it up. Um, oh, let's see. I'm actually uh, checking it Copyright. out. Copyright. Copyright. What does it say here? Um, 2013. Okay, now this was this is twenty years ago, twenty five years ago. It's like nineteen eighty eight or something. Yeah, well, then it might be that Dennis, and I'll have to think about that. What his name is, and and tell you before the well, probably at the end of the show, huh? No. Well, I remember, and this is the thing, and I'm sure that our audience, now that I've talked about this publicly, that somebody will know who I'm talking about. It was a, it was a while ago, and I I I remember being so sucked into it. Um, because of his attention to detail and, and how to get this done and how to do it and that that he does it all the time, right? Every time he's bored with being a, an airplane pilot, he changes his life and the next day he's whatever. And I just thought, wow, it was, uh, it was, mm, it was, it just, it had me. And I've, I've remembered it now and I'm, I'm going to find out who this guy was. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to get to the bottom of it. Well, I can tell you from the Akashic Records vantage point that all of that's entirely possible. Um, but it's also, what I have learned is that we're not likely to have infinite variety, but we have enough variety that, you know, for example, <clears throat> you want to learn about integrity. So you become the bad guy at one extreme and you become the really rigid following the rules guy on the other. And in your job in that lifetime all those versions of you is to find the middle ground. Mm. So, you know, um, hmm. it's yeah. one way to look at it. But right. as far as, you know, different, you know, that seems so frivolous to me to wake up one way and another way and another way. But why not? You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like uh, something that we would all dream about. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's up for you now? Are you speaking anywhere? Uh, well, oh, we didn't I'm even talk about the new book. Yeah. Oh, Beyond the Flower of Life. Uh, tell us about it really quick. And and you were one of many contributors on the book. How did it come about? Okay. So Reality of, of Creation came about because my friend Jean Adrian had put on a summit and a number of us spoke. And we, we got very clear messages that we needed to put together in a book, which we were surprised. So we did. And, and my piece on it is the higher self. And the higher self... Um, information in here is how to do it. It's a how to uh, chapter and there's seven easy rules to follow. You do it for six weeks and you will have accuracy. So you can ask your own higher self questions about what's going on and you know, who done it and what for. And that's pretty fun. So, um, I, you know, I could take you through it if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, no, go ahead. It. Go ahead. So, um, the first thing you do is take a minute and we're going to, I'm going to walk you through like a 30 second mini meditation. So everybody who's listening, if you're not driving or running machinery, you can close your eyes for a second and just open your heart a little, think of a pattern infant, seeing yourself love that little one, and then inviting your higher self to join you in your heart. And as you do that, you have that energetic connection with your divine self that's now moving into an open heart. And then ask your higher self to show up and give you a symbol or signal for yes. Hmm. And that symbol or signal could be a color, it could be a shape, it could be an itchy ear, could be anything. But sometimes it's hard to notice what it is. So just stay with it for a second and ask again, higher self, show me my symbol or signal for yes. And now let's do the same thing for no. What's my symbol or signal for no? What's my symbol or signal for neutral? That's the basics. Thank your higher self. Write it down. Whatever you got, write it down. Now, you take that information and you use that for six weeks going forward. So if you're starting now, let's say 
today is September 1. It's not. We know that it's the 6th. But if it were the 1st, you would go from now until October 15th. So we're going to go until October 21. And for the next six weeks, you're in a practice period. That means you're like going to the golf range with a bucket of balls or you're standing in front of the basketball hoop and you're shooting balls. You're not keeping score or anything. You're just allowing yourself to practice. And the practice consists of these things. Only yes, no questions. Only unimportant questions. You make your important questions a rare exception. You don't second guess it. If you get, if you ask a question, you always follow through. Now this gets kind of funny. You're looking at some cookies. You're thinking, nah, man, they look good, but I've already asked my higher self. I better not. My higher self said, no, don't eat them. If you really want the cookies, don't ask, just have some. Don't be asking things like, should I quit smoking? Because those are important questions, even if you think they're frivolous. <clears throat> at the end, and, and no other divination tools. So you can't use your pendulum or muscle testing or any of that. Unless, again, for your clients, if that's your work, fine. Do it for your clients, but don't do it for you. So for six weeks, you're asking unimportant questions. Like, you're at a restaurant. Should I order this? No. Should I order this? No. Should I order this? Yes. And you're not asking the should I, by the way. I'm just using that as a fast way to talk. You always put it the same way. Higher self is it my highest and best good too. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Now, what happens is because you're doing it in a playful way, because you're asking about stuff you don't care about, your ego's standing in the back. And your ego's watching, but it doesn't really care whether you have green beans tonight or broccoli if you don't care. If you do care, just name what you want. <clears throat> now, if you're willing to do this in a playful way for 30 times a day or 40 times a day, what happens is a lot of cool stuff happens. You ask your higher self, should I go to the pizza place for lunch? No. Should I go to the Chinese place for lunch? Well, there isn't anything else. Well, what else? Okay, there is one other place. Should I go there, that new sandwich place? Yes. You show up there and you run into somebody you've been looking for. Or you order the meal and it turns out to be the best meal that anybody got in the whole um, table of people that were ordering meals or you cook a whole chicken instead of the fish and people stand, come to your door and you say, why don't you come and join me for dinner? Cool stuff starts to happen. And your ego that's standing back watching thinks, Hmm, that higher self's always got the goods. Now your ego is your friend. I'm not one of those people who believes that the ego should be subdued. So I'm looking at the ego saying, you know what? The ego got you this far. You're listening to Jimmy Church. Your ego puts you there. You know, so you look at your ego as your buddy and your ego is making decisions for you or helping you make decisions based on your history, not on your um, ability to look at the future or possibilities of the future. Right. So your, your ego is always in there, you know, well, you better be safe. You better do it this way. <clears throat> so what happens is it's kind of like if I said to you, Jimmy, you know, I've, I've won $10,000 at the races. Last time I won 5000 and the time before that three and two months ago, I, I, I won, you know, $3,000. Do you want to come with me next time? Of course you're going to come. And of course you're going to bet what I bet. And that's what happens. So now your ego, at the end of six weeks, your ego and your higher self are on the same page because your ego wants you to be happy. Your ego wants what you want. And when you start asking your higher self, your higher self tells you the answer. Now, for six weeks, you're only asking yes, no questions because you're in a practice period. So you're not allowed to be asking open-ended questions like, will it rain today? You could ask, is it my highest and best good to carry an umbrella? One time I did carry an umbrella all day long. I didn't get rained on, but right, right. I tripped and fell. That umbrella saved me. What about uh, the neutral symbol? What does that do? The neutral is cool because it gives you more information. Sometimes it's about divine timing. Sometimes neutral means it's none of your business. And so you don't really need to be asking that question. And sometimes neutral means it doesn't make any difference. Like if you're in a a, a canoe and you're paddling down a river and you come up on a, 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 an island, you could go right or you could go left. You're going to go past that that island and you're going to go further down the road before you get off that, that uh, canoe. Right. So it won't matter whether you take the right road or the left. They're the same. And sometimes it truly doesn't matter. So if you're, if you're asking, okay, if you're asking, and I love this, everybody, you want the your higher self, you want the symbol for yes, you want the symbol for no, and you need the neutral symbol. 
Now, what happens if you don't get a yes or a no and you get a neutral and then you're what do you make your own decision at that point? I mean, I I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, you do. You do. And I actually say that to people. Um, I actually say to people, if you get a neutral or you ask the same question, you don't get any answer. Just make a decision because the practice period is about play. It's about being playful and having fun. And if you're not having fun, then you're working too hard and you're paying too much attention and you're putting too much stress on it. You know, it's like people who go to practice playing golf and then they come back all stressed. That's not cool. Right. So the goal here is to be playful. So, you know, one time at a class, a woman shows up and she noticed another woman looking her over and she says, don't even ask my higher self dressed me today. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, so after <laughs> that, that's good. I haven't, I haven't laughed like that in a while. That is X. So at the end of six weeks though, six um, weeks, you get new DNA. That's why that's what I'm, that's, that's exactly where I was going at the end of six weeks. Can you be like Edgar Casey or something? Well, Edgar Casey, you know, when well, you know what up, I mean? Could you, yeah, but yeah absolutely. You can take know, your, you can know, and you'll be accurate. That's the thing that's so mind boggling. You will have accuracy wow. and you'll have accuracy that you can rely on. And that's what makes this so magical because once you get past your six weeks and then you start asking open-ended questions, or let's say you get a hit, you know, like, you know, take this road home instead of the usual way you go home. Right. And, and you're thinking, well, what do I do with that information? So you can ask higher self. Is this my higher self telling me to do this? Yes. Do it now. So you do. And, you know, later you find out there was a big tie up on your regular route home and your higher self pulled you out of the action. And here's the thing. Your higher self is proactive. Your lower self is reactive. So lots of people get good intuition and they get, you know, a sense of what they're supposed to do. But the higher self is ahead of the curve. And I'll give you a, a storyline to explain that. You're driving a cool car up a mountain. You're driving fast. You're going around the curves pretty fast. You know, and something says, you know, maybe I better slow down. It could be dangerous up here. And sure enough, another car comes down the hill, goes left of center in front of you. And thank God you slowed down. You're safe. You're cool. But you could have been, you know, you could have driven right off the road. In the same scenario, you're driving up that mountain, driving like crazy, and you get a message. There's a scenic overlook coming up ahead. Get off, take some pictures. That crazy driver comes down the hill, left of center, and where are you? You are not even in the action. Right, right. Proactive. So right. your higher self. Well, so what happens at the end of six weeks after you see the door to your higher self is open only one way. You have to push it open. But once you push it open with your activity of a daily practice of asking every day, you know, hundreds of unimportant questions every day for six weeks, that door gets propped open. Then your higher self is going to come down and start telling you stuff you need to do. And you'll be able to check in. Is this my higher self telling me blah, blah, blah. And that's your fail safe. And that's what helps you. You know, I had the craziest situation when I was driving down a interstate one night after a class and a semi goes by me and I get told to get pulled into the slipstream. And I'm thinking to myself, no, man, that's a bad idea. And yes, get behind that truck. So I did. And then we're coming up on the uh, interchange. And I know I'm going to be taking the other freeway. And I'm wondering what's going to happen. Well, the, the semi takes the interchange. And I ask again, am I to stay with him? Yes, stay with him. And on the interchange, as we're turning off to the next highway, another car comes going the wrong way, 60 miles an hour. This guy, the semi goes over to the berm. We're still moving at 60 miles ourselves, And I'm right behind him. When he pulls over like that, I ask my eyes, am I to stay with him? Yes, yeah, stay with him. So I pull over. I am so close to him that that other driver can't even see me. And I don't think that I'm a good enough driver that I would have known what to do if I was head on with a right, car. Right, 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 right. So I was totally out of the fray. Then when we get onto the new freeway, I ask again, higher self, do I still have to stay with this guy? No, nope, you're fine. And that's the other thing. It turns on the voice. Right, right. It turns on the inner answers. And that happens over time. So first you do the higher self practice. And ladies and gentlemen, I was so much in my head that even though I was very intuitive and, you know, I had the right genes, I still didn't get stuff. You know, when everyone else is seeing colors and shapes and all that kind of stuff, not me. I never got any of that stuff. I had to teach myself the workaround in order to get where I'm at today. So, you know, you can't say, oh, she's got a gift and I don't, because we're all gonna learn what I've learned.
Thank you so much, Maureen. You are the absolute very best, and I mean it. And and just thank you for being part of the family. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You got it. Maureen St. Germain. Her website is MaureenStGermain.com, and you can pick up uh, her new book, Realities of Cre- Creation with Everybody Else, uh, Moving Beyond the Limitations of Our Beliefs at Amazon. You can find it through her website, too, as well. Thank you so much, Maureen. Be safe out there. Maureen St. Germain. I think she already took off uh, her headset at that point. Thank you so much, Maureen. What a great show tonight. And for, for everybody that, that uh, you know, had the courage to want answers in your life that called in tonight and uh, spoke with Maureen. Thank you so much. And everybody else that couldn't get through, uh, you know, that's just the way it is. But uh, we'll have Maureen on again very soon. And also, I want to remind everybody tomorrow night, Margot Mateus is going to be here live in the studio. Um, now, where was I? Um, oh, oh, the International Astronomical Unions. I, this is for uh, Freddie Mercury. I want you to listen. The International Astronomical Union's Minor Planet Center officially renamed an asteroid after Freddie Mercury for his uh, I, I think it's so cool. Formerly known as Asteroid 17473, the object was first discovered in 1991, the year after Freddie's death, and will now be known as Asteroid Freddie Mercury. How cool is that? The announcement was made by uh, Brian May, the guitar player for Queen, in a video first played at a gathering in Mercury's honor today. But to me... And I think it's cool. I, I, I really do. I think it's great. But I think they re- should rename the planet Mercury, Freddie Mercury. That's what I think. I think we need to lobby for that. I think Mercury should be called Freddie Mercury. When, when anybody ever says Mercury today is talking about the planet, who do you think of? What pops in your mind? Freddie Mercury, right? So we should just call Mercury Freddie Mercury. And, and I'm all for it. And if anybody has a way to uh, get that done, let me know, and we'll get that action going. Five decades after it was discovered on the Isle of Sky Beach, the remains of a 170 million year old sea monster are now going on public display. Head over to our Facebook page and check it out because while finding definitive proof of Scotland's mythical Loch Ness monster uh, is still out there, we're trying to get that done. Nessie hunters may, you know, take some solace in the remains of the store Loch beast described by scientists as the crown jewels of all fossils. The store Loch monster was discovered. In 1966, more than 30 years after the first Nessie sighting by power station manager as he was walking on the beach, right, on the Isle of Skye, identified as an extinct ichthyosaur, that's how you say it, I checked it today, the dolphin-like creature is said to have been a fearsome four-meter-long predator, four meters, predator, which tore apart its prey with cone-shaped teeth. Could it be? I'm just saying. And go look at the pictures over at our Facebook page. It will make you go, huh. Could be. As scientists hold uh, the world's first conference on, now check this out. I'm going to say it right now. Sex robots. Posted this. uh, We posted it over on our Facebook page today. And some things on Facebook take off. Our our normal post on our Facebook page uh, for the radio page gets about 15 to 20,000 views. You know, you can see the views right there. You can see it. Some are 25,000, 35,000. I'm going to say on average, right, 15 to 20,000. And this sex robot thing just took off today out of the gate. (laughs) But this happened in Great Britain. And it's the world's first conference on sex robots. One expert's one expert warns that making love to machines <laughs> this thing on this thing working could become addictive. Robot experts from around the world will converge on Manchester, Northern England this week 
for the Human Choice and Computers Conference, where they will explore the latest research and theories about how humans will engage with robots. Academics will also touch, no pun intended, on moral issues, such as whether sex robots are potentially harmful and should be banned. The conference will feature a keynote speech <laughs> from Professor from <laughs> Charles S. Yeah, his last name, E-S-S, from the University of Oslo. And the title of the keynote speech is What's Love Got to Do With It? Robots, Sexuality, and the Art of Being Human. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Save your email. The mountaineering community, this uh, reported on this last week, and it's, uh, it's kind of nutty. The mountaineering community was dubious back in June when Dinesh and Tarakashwari Rathad announced that they had achieved a lifelong goal. That goal was being the first Indian couple to climb to the summit of Mount Everest. Those doubts were confirmed this week when uh, uh, authorities from Nepal said that the Rathads, both of them police officers in the Indian state of, uh, well, in, in Indian state, I can't pronounce it right now, we're at the end of the show and I don't want to get all tongue-tied, had doctored photographs, and you can see the photographs over on our Facebook page, submitted to the government in applying for a certificate of a successful climb. The couple were barred from climbing Nepal's mountains for 10 years. Now they show up with these photographs of them on the top of Mount Everest. Indian police officials said that the couple now has not been seen at all in public and have not reported to their jobs where a separate investigation is underway. They're both police officers. And the two photographs, the doctored one and the undoctored one, are up on our Facebook page. They completely lied. And how could you not get caught? How could you not get caught? It's unbelievable. You got to go check out the pictures. They're over there right now. JetBlue, their flight number 387 touched down in Cuba last week, making it the first direct commercial flight between the United States and Cuba in a half a century. Now, oh, how much time do I have? I got to get the, I want to get the last of these in. Hunters tracking geese in the wilds of southern Iceland have returned with something unbelievable. An incredibly well-preserved 1,000-year-old Viking sword. You can go and check it out right now. Look at this picture. I, I, I mean, with all of the Viking stuff and all the stuff that went down in the UK, you would think that these things would be all over the place, right? Fields of battle. The group of hunters stumbled upon the weapon in South Iceland, right? Iceland, in a region badly hit by floods last year. Pictures of the Viking weapon of war, a double-edged sword, show it to be remarkable it, in condition that you just wouldn't believe. You've got to go check it out, right? The tip, the tippity tip was broken off. Everything else intact. And this is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Got to thank the one and only Maureen St. Germain. Absolutely incredible show tonight. And thank you, Maureen, for taking all of those calls. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark D. Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Mark Dunbar, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announces are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA The Planet. Thank you to everyone that called in tonight. Thank you, Maureen St. Germain. Tomorrow night, Margot Mateus, right here. This broadcast is on a copyright of 2016 by Faded Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter right now at J Church Radio. I want everybody to be safe. Go Beckley Tepe.